to another Pokemon card live stream. It's me, your host, TCC. Thanks so much for waiting patiently as I set up the live stream. Every night we go live, and tonight's another night. Brad says, should I get 36 packs of the McDonald's packs? Oh my gosh, those have been pretty popular, the McDonald's packs. I'm kind of surprised, because when they initially came out, they weren't ad quite as popular. And we had a busy night yesterday. <clears throat> Man, I uh, I fell asleep on the couch and I just woke up for the live stream and I feel like half awake. <laughs> Who let the dogs out? Hoops, says James O. The, the hoops aren't here yet. Hey, mister, how are you? What's up, Jonathan? Trey Booker says, what's the update on the Fossil Custom Booster? Uh, the Fossil Custom Booster, we ran through a round of it not too long ago. Well, let me get these out of the way. There's the largest at 17. It looks like the next round of the fossil hasn't even begun. So I think people are taking a little break from the fossil packs, which is understandable. Uh, but here's where the fossil packs rest. Three of these are sold off, and there's seven left. Okay, so you got seven packs left. What's up, Face Fire? Bill Tran says, woo! Hi, mister. Any PSA updates? What's up, Edson uh, Hernandez? Yes, I've got a box of PSA uh, booster packs that have been graded. Those are here right now, and I, I didn't prep them for tonight. I was supposed to, uh, but I got distracted with other things going on today. Uh, so they will be shown off tomorrow, either in the night stream or maybe in an early daytime stream. So those are here, but I haven't shown them off. They're really old, though, for people who are like, oh, where's my PSA stuff? These are from a long time ago, almost like a year ago. Uh, the other news for PSA slabs is if you haven't gotten any notifications in the PSA news channel in the Discord about a uh, submission that your cards are in, then your cards just haven't finished grading. Any CGC updates? No CGC updates. Uh, it's, it just takes a long time to grade, guys. I've been doing the, you know, I've been submitting for people for a little while. And every day I, I still get like three or four messages that are like, hey, when are my cards coming back? They're not coming back, man. They're going to take forever. <laughs> they always take a very long time. And it's, it's just always been that way. Uh, at PSA currently, the larger submissions that we do, uh, they've been taking, well, the last one was 11 months old. I don't know how old the, the last one will be. Did you see your big shout out on TCA Gaming today? TCA Gaming, he's really good. I like him. He's one of my favorite Pokemon content uh, cr creators. And I believe it was Eddie Petty did a little shout out. He, uh, I think he ordered a pack over there. And then he said, congratulations to TCC for his new house. Thanks, Eddie. That was so nice of you. How did the talk with the neighbor's dogs go? Well, so here's what happened today. If you guys haven't kept up with the dog drama, we moved to our new home and quickly discovered that the neighbors have two dogs that basically go anywhere they want because they don't leash their dogs and the dogs aren't kept in the backyard. And it's kind of annoying, but it's not like it, it's not like I was necessarily freaking out about it. I mean, they would like come up to the back window and growl at the cats, so that was annoying. However, today things got far worse because I went outside to pick up some, it was a big box of penny sleeves, those just arrived. I went outside to pick some of those up and I noticed quickly that the back of the box as I lifted it up was all wet and I thought it was just gonna be like rainwater, but we actually have a canopy uh, over our driveway, so there's no way it should be wet. So I looked at it and it's a thick yellow liquid, almost like oil, and I'm like, wow, FedEx spilled some sort of liquid on my package. And then it dawned on me, wait a second, this is dog pee. And I went back to the spot that I picked it up out of, uh, and it had piss all over the ground. So it was a little p uh, puddle of piss, and I picked it up. It was dog pee. So, you know, the FedEx man, he left the box on the floor, and the dog must have walked up and sniffed it and been like, oh, that doesn't sm smell like it's from around here. So it pissed on it. And I lost it. Nobody pees on my $300 box of penny sleeves. Uh, sleeves. I was really upset really, really upset. Like, who lets their dog roam around freely in their front yard and doesn't expect the dog to soil their neighbor's property in the first place? It's so obvious this was going to happen. Marco says, get a door cam or something and show your neighbors. Yeah, dog pee on things they claim. The box is that dog's territory. So first of all, I had to, uh, I had to clean the box off 
And then I had to go, I printed out some paperwork on my computer about the dog laws. And it says really clearly, dogs may not roam free. Dogs must be on a leash uh, if they're not being supervised. And so these neighbors that just let these two dogs run around, I, I, I was so mad. I walked straight up to their door and knocked on the door and rang the doorbell. They didn't answer. So in the end, I ended up writing a note. Your dog peed on my mail and uh, it can't happen anymore. And I, I attached the paperwork that showed the laws for whether or not dogs are allowed to roam. And uh, I don't know if I see their dogs again, I might call animal control because now they know I'm upset. And uh, they didn't come back over here and say anything. They could have because uh, I, I mentioned that they could talk if they wanted to in the note. I told them I'm, a re you know, I'm reasonable, but well, that's what it said on the note. But the thing is, you just can't have your dog going around. I mean, they could grab the package off the por porch too. Let's say it was a real light package. They could just grab it up and run off with it. And that's your guys' Pokemons. And some of those Pokemons are really expensive. So, you know, it's it's so frustrating. And maybe they've been living out here. You, we don't really live in a very uh, populated area. It's a very backwoodsy, hard to find few people live out here there's just a few larger homes and maybe it's their luxury to think that they can have their dogs running around in the in the yards of everyone but it's just not man so maybe they're used to it maybe the previous neighbors didn't care so much about it but and, and again i i don't care that much you know the dogs are running around and i don't like that they're coming in our backyard and growling at the cats and all that it, it wasn't like killing me, but man, we can't have, we can't have dog pee on our packages. That's just unacceptable. Dogs run off with the first edition booster. Yeah, that's right. Are the dogs in the Digimon? <laughs> Is it possible to fence it off? Well, we're talking about the front porch where FedEx left a box. So who the hell has to fence off their own front porch just because their neighbor decides their dog should be allowed to run around and piss on your your incoming mail. No, we're not doing that. That's silly. The dogs will eat a PSA return and that'll be it. <laughs> if the dogs take the steam siege, that's the last straw. That's right. Bro, you need real cameras. You never know what can happen around there. Yeah, we're going to get some cameras for sure. Actually, that's why I mentioned in the, uh, in the note I left, I told him we're getting packages. And the moment your dog tries to do something like that again, we're going to report it. What would happen if everyone said E at the same time? E, wait until the dogs tear the next package up. Are the dogs in a Digimon? Hope everyone had a good day. Man, yeah. So it was, it was really, really frustrating and really disappointing. And everything I feared would, could happen with the dogs. They could actually be a nuisance. What's up, Mike Side? How's it going, Mike Side? So let me think. I was going to do something. I think I was going to stand up. Oh, you know what I was going to do? I was actually going to go stand up and get some of these penny sleeves that the dog have uh, dogs have pissed on. Don't worry, though. I washed the piss off. It was on the outside of the box, and the penny sleeves are nicely all packaged in uh, well-sealed plastic. It's just so frustrating, man. So give me a minute. He says, you will be the best neighbor. Dude, I'm a quiet neighbor. I'm a quiet neighbor. I don't have kids. I don't have dogs. I stay out of your stuff. You stay out of my stuff. I'm an easy going neighbor to have. Very easy neighbor. All right. Here we are. Wash the mail in the lake. <laughs> to put it to put it simply, I wish I was my own neighbor. I wish. You're getting the pea carts now, that's right. <laughs> oh man. Oh, man, the drama. Mr. Thoughts on the oil pipeline hack slash shutdown. Oh, uh, yeah, so Mr. Trent is referring to a major uh, oil pipeline in the United States, kind of like energy infrastructure almost, and it got hacked. It got hacked, so now they're having an oil shortage on the, uh, maybe like in the eastern country, uh, eastern states of America, and it was a successful hack, cyber attack, um, and it just sucks a lot. I don't really have any thoughts beyond that other than we should find out who did it and stop them. My cards won't get PSA 10 because they smell like piss. That's right. PSA 10 dog pee cards. 
I'm not happy about it at all. It is ridiculous, says Living Life with Anna. Well, you know, what happens is now that there's a shortage of gasoline, everyone's running out and buying up as much of it as they can. In fact, I was uh, I was watching TikTok before I, before I fell asleep on the couch, and there was this recording of a woman who was literally pouring gas into, into plastic bags because she was trying to fill up on gas because everyone's hoarding it out of fear of not having enough gas. She was just pouring it into plastic bags. It's like the craziest, worst idea I've ever seen. Oh, I don't have a gas container, but I want lots of gas before I go because of the, you know, gas shortage. It's like the toilet paper when COVID hit. Everyone's like, ah, I need toilet paper. Well, now everyone's going crazy and buying all the gas up. And it's, it's so bad. Like, oh, <laughs> no. If everyone only took a little bit of gas, the the supply shortage wouldn't be such a bad problem. Uh, but this is predictable human nature. This is the exact same reason why the Federal Reserve doesn't want to say that there's inflation, because if they did, everyone might act more crazy. Uh, so it's when everyone stays calm that they don't cause a greater problem. You know what I mean? No gas. I just farted out. That's right. You can just fart it out and then that'll power your car. <laughs> Imagine if cars could work that way. Gas went from like $2 to over 3 Oh, no, man. Oh, my God. So we got some orders tonight. The first one is our friend, Edward Eaton. He says, 10 live customs. I need a bag. If it's wigged, I'm telling my mom. Mom! Wow, first order of the night. You ordered 10 live customs. All right, Edward, let's see what you got. Edward Eaton. You know, with those big orders of the live customs... I got to say, they're so risky because really what you need is for the last pack or the second of the last pack to land on a hot pole. Let's see what we got. Tag team is pack number one. Pack number two is cold. Oh, pack number three. Oh, what do we have here? Six battle styles. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Set that up. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, too large. Eight, nine, and ten is going to be holographic absol. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that makes 10. Okay, mister. Well, again, I think that when you do those large orders, you're really relying on the last one or two packs to be a hit. In this case, you're going to pick up two spots in the large. Uh, let's see. I need energy cards. One, two. Mom, it's wigged. <laughs> well, let's see what you get out of those battle styles and uh, this guy too, right? And we were on spots number... Oh. 18 and 19, huh? And your name is our friend, Edward Eaton. Is that right? Eaton. MJ, we are always going to have cheaper gas with refineries dotting to the golfing coast. What? Hey, mister, got any gas for sale? That's right. We sell gas. We sell Pokemon cards and propane and propane accessories. Yeah, that's pretty wild. Um, I don't know, man. That's scary to think that there are people who can get away. Do you think they'll get away with it, or do you think the U.S. government will figure out who the hacking group was? Howdy, mister, says Baron. What's up, Baron? Let's take a look at your hollows, by the way. Some cool stuff. Skidoo. <laughs> well, I like the Absol especially. He's pretty nice. Tell you what. Proof electric, car electric cars are not ready for the world. Oh, are you talking about hacking? On the other hand, maybe electric... Well, I was going to say, on the other hand, maybe if you had an electric car right now, you wouldn't be so concerned about gas. Hmm? It was a Russian group, so they claim. Law, the U.S. government couldn't figure out who did 9-11. It was an inside job. It was a Russian crew called Darkside. Ooh. Ooh. 
they gotta come up with some cooler names than Dark Side. Tesla to the moon. Yes, but I hear it will go up for us too. Hey, TCC, thank you for the Pikachu last night, sir. I didn't expect to pull him. No problem, Russ. You can put gas in Booster Pack Slab. Sleepy Joe tripped and fell on a computer. Sleepy Joe. <laughs> oh, man. I saw another interview from Caitlyn Jenner. Uh, this time it was a. Uh, did I say Caitlyn Jenner? Or what's Bruce Jenner, Caitlyn Jenner? I think I said that right. And, um, man, she was. She was sounding like a pretty hardcore Republican. One of the things that the interviewer asked was, do you believe that the election was stolen? And Caitlyn Jenner wouldn't say no. I was I was kind of surprised, man. Uh, so that's going on in California right now, too. You said the name correctly. Here we go, pack number two. I'm bad with names. I really am, especially when it's like celebrities and stuff. One, two, three. We got Licky Licky. Four. Oh, Tyranitar V, huh? Okay, Tyranitar V. Five. Oh, picking up Victini V Max, huh? How can an old analog piping system be hacked? It's not possible. It's all part of the Great Reset, mister. <laughs> and last pack, we pull. Is that Zorua? It's Zorora! Woohoo! Next thing to be hacked is going to be the power grid. I know. I've heard about that. I've heard that uh, the United States power grid is not that well secured. By the way, I'm supposed to live ship a Scalameme, but I do not know Scalameme's real name. I know I shipped to him recently, but I used his real name. A Scalameme, if you're watching tonight or you rewatch this later, help me out. I need you to contact me and tell me uh, who you are and, and and what your address is. I don't have your information, so I can't do the shipping. Yeah, so I got to have the real name. Loop Zimmerman, ah, you were watching and there it is. All right, so I was trying to look you up in Discord as well. I'll write that down. The minute you said it, I remember. But you'd be surprised how many names I deal with. It's very easy to forget. So I'm glad I was able to catch you tonight. And now we can definitely get that live shipped. Okay, now I thought these polls were a little on the tough side. But don't forget, some of your polls was, was that you got two uh, in the large. But let's let's throw some extra stuff in here, okay? This is a friend from our, uh, a gift from our friend Nogala. There you go, Rainbow Rare Birds. Oh my God, there's a huge spider on the table. Oh no, what do I do? Do I scare him away? <laughs> he didn't like that. Um, we can pretend he's not there. You stay over there. We'll be over here. Okay. <laughs> Kill it! <laughs> Let it bite you so you become Spider-Man. Yeah, maybe Kitty would eat it. It looks like a typical wolf spider, or if it's not a wolf spider, then it's some kind of tunnel spider. Hell no. I saw the movie Live Free and Die Hard. Bad Spider. Grade it. We're going to grade the spider PSA 10. Okay, Edward. He, does he need... He says, I need a bag. Here you go, Mr. Edward. Spooderman, Spooderman. Send it to PSA. That's right. We'll take a nice card and we'll crush it. We'll crush the spider onto that card. And then we'll send it to PSA and see what they grade it. What do you think you'll get? If you've got a dead smushed bug on your card, I imagine it can still receive a grade. We can tell them, keep the spider on the card. We don't want it removed. Edward Eton. Hey, man, you seem like a really good guy. That's right. I'm such a good guy. In fact, I proclaim myself the authority on being a good guy, just like PSA claims to be the authority on card grading. You just kind of say that you are, and then everyone have to, has to agree with you. TCC, see my wink, wink, nudge, nudge powers were real last night. I saw that. You sniped, mister. I'm the nice guy authority. Next up, we've got Squid Pokemon. Squid Pokemon wants two Sun and Moon base. Two Sun and Moon base. Well, if you insist, mister, for Squid Pokemon. Do you fart loud? I don't even fart. I'm like a fairy. 
Sneep. He says, okay, seriously, burn the spider. That's right. We're going to set that spider on fire. I don't know. Is he still there? He's still there. Pack number one. Oops. Ooh, here's Spenda. And pack number two. Repel. I'm sorry, mister. This time, nothing too hot in those packs. It was just two packs. Sometimes that happens when it's just two packs. Is that TGC 10 gold medal cherries art? Oh my gosh. Gold medal. That's right. CGC 10 gold medal cherries art. <laughs> it would be interesting if CGC graded the metal cards, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's a weird thing, isn't it? And Mr. Adam Vincent says, hey there, mister. Love the channel. Two battle styles. All right. Mr. Adam Vinson with two battle styles. TCC, I want to see you open cards on your boat next, sir, for TikTok. Well, uh, it will take us a while to get the funds together for a boat. That's all I can say. We might try to buy a boat after selling the condo, but we have we're not that close to selling the condo. It's not even for sale yet. Uh, but after we sell the condo, that should free up some funds. So we haven't decided. We've got Ente Reverse Hollow. All right. Ente Reverse Hollow and Embor. All right. Embor. Why are you doing so well? And Mr. Adam, I actually do like the Ente here. I think the Ente is the best hollow in the set. For battle styles. He's a pretty nice looking Entei. So you held, hold on to that. Take good care of him. And, and maybe later off he'll pay off. So Mr. Adam. Let's find your bag. Mr. Anderson. I'm a woman. Buy me cards. Buy me cards. I'm a woman. Will you trade first edition Metapod for a condo? That's right. <laughs> Andrew. Austin. Getting hacked, man. What's up, Gentoo Penguins? You don't need a bag, do you? Mr. Adam, Adnan, Augustine, Addy, Aaron Fowler. Okay, he's not in here. We got some Minecraft music playing in the background this time. They should make an Evolutions 2.0 where they put the cards they left out of Evolutions. I think that would be a very cool idea. And if they do that, maybe they can also have lots of print lines in that. <laughs> there we go. I found you, Mr. Adam. Look at that Galarian Berserker. Doesn't he look nice? How many pokies for some gas? That's right, trading gas for pokies. So let's see. Uh, give me a moment. The title for tonight is that the daily giveaway returns for everyone. That's right. Uh, I couldn't put that in the title yesterday night because yesterday night's title was the PSA return. Uh, but yeah, the daily giveaway is available for everyone. You just have to be here in the live stream when I open up the channel, okay? So you guys who are watching, you'll be told when the daily giveaway channel opens up, and then you'll be given a chance to put in a guess between 1 and 100. Uh, we might increase that number to like 1 and 200 or something. But yeah, you'll have a chance to make your guess, and we'll anyone who puts that number in is going to have a chance for the giveaway tonight. The other thing it says is Streamlabs is back. That's right. Streamlabs has returned. You can find a link to my Streamlabs at the top of the description. However, please note, you may only use Streamlabs for a donation. You may not use it to purchase Pokemon cards. If you use it to purchase Pokemon cards, I will not open those cards for you. I will keep the money as a donation, okay? So uh, you can only use Streamlabs to leave a message. Streamlabs allows you to talk to me, basically. And if you send a Streamlabs message, a little robot lady will say whatever it is you wanted to say. Okay, let me let me play an example. This is what it'll sound like. This is a this is an example. This is a test donation for fifty-six dollars. Oh oh. Let me turn that up a little bit. So I'm gonna turn that all the way up. And then I'm going to adjust the music for the Minecraft background music. So they're in balance. There we go. All right, we'll try that again.
This is a test donation for twenty dollars. Oh oh. There you go. He says louder, mister. I want to hear it. Okay, we'll take it all the way to the top. One more time. This is a test donation for seventy-six dollars. Oh oh. So there you go. You can send a dollar donation, and you can essentially you can talk a little bit in the stream. So if you want to tell me, oh no, you've forgotten this. Or, hey, pay attention, this is really important. Or maybe you just want to say something nice or you want to say something funny, whatever the case is. You can use the Streamlabs link to send that message. And, and it's strictly for donations, okay? Streamlabs is only for donations. You may not use it to purchase cards. Okay, so we've talked about that. Daily giveaway is back. Streamlabs is back. Let's go open more pokies. Hey, pay attention. <laughs> Kitty, get the cards. Oh, Kitty. Yeah, there you go. And, and who was that from, by the way? I should look. That was Alex PSX. And he donated uh, $3. And what I can do then is jump over here. The nice thing about making a donation through Streamlabs is almost all the money actually goes to me. When you make a Super Chat donation, 30% uh, of that goes to YouTube or Google. So Google's this big multi-billion dollar company and they still take 30% of every donation. Whereas with Streamlabs, uh, they don't take any of it, right? Uh, well, you know, if you use PayPal, PayPal takes a little bit. If you use credit card, credit card takes a little bit. So it's not totally free, but it's, it's pretty close to free, Streamlabs is. All right, let's see what we got. Edward, Squid, Adam, Trenton. What's up, Trenton? He says, Trenton Conger here, mister. Two Rebel Clash. Two Rebels. All right, let's see. Two Rebel Smell here there. Two Rebel Smash. Let's sneak them up. Did that say goal of 50K? Uh, no, it said a goal of 30K. <laughs> 30K. Uh, which we will definitely not reach uh, because I'm going to end up funding most of that myself. And we don't know, well, my wife and I together. Remember, it's not just me. My wife and I both earn money. So we have no kids and a dual income. That's how you afford nice things in life, basically. But I got to have kids now, man. My wife and I were actually talking about that. It's baby time. Baby time. Maybe we should buy the boat first. Oh, 30K? Easy then. I know, right? <laughs> Just 30000 Well, And we can finance it. Uh, we can go to a boat dealer and say we want a $30,000 boat. And they'll say like, all right, let's pull out a big debt for you. And then we would be paying interest payments on that debt. So that's always a possibility too. Because um, we don't think we're going to raise $30,000 in any short period of time. And we would sure like to be out on the water this summer. Or we could wait a whole year. You know, if we waited a whole year, we could probably buy it outright with cash. So it's hard to say. Sorry, Mr. Trenton, just two hollows. Now we've got Tyler Adolphson. He would like one custom booster pack for Tyler. How's it going tonight, Tyler? Mini economist, that's right. Tyler, oh, that's actually a nice hollow. I like that. That's Raikou. Raikou reverse hollow, I'm pretty sure. That's like the Japanese version of a reverse hollow. Okay. Oh! Hey, this is my first time buying, and I would like one Battle Styles pack. I don't have a bag. Just kidding. It's a donation. Love the video and your community. Keep it up. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, Paul, you just gave me six bucks and not a Battle Styles. Just kidding. It's a donation. Thank you so much, Paul. Let's bring this up to 59. Paul donated six bucks. I appreciate that, Paul. Yeah, I don't recommend saying that even as a joke, though, because I don't want to get in trouble. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, so Tyler Adolphson. Mr. Tyler. Here we go. My kid's almost two. She changed my world. Mr. Your kid's almost two. She changed your world. Well, you know, a boat can change your world, too, mister. I'm just teasing. Timothy, Tristan... 
Here we are, Tyler, you're back here. I found you, Tyler. Only 29,941 to go. <laughs> yeah, it's a long way. Ta-da. Next up, we've got Edward Eaton. He says, five darkness ablaze. Five darkness. It's okay, we'll just manifest it. We'll just manifest the boat. Mister, I found some evolutions at Walmart. Whoa. One, two, three, four, five. You found evolutions at Walmart? They don't even sell Pokemon cards at either of the Walmarts I live by anymore. There's no Pokemon cards there at all. You can look for them, but they're not on the shelves. Sell us your kids and just get a boat. It's not the boat that changes your world. It's the boat babes. That's right, guys. How am I supposed to get boat babes if I don't even have a boat? Step one to getting a boat babe is having a boat. Where's Nogla? <laughs> He'll help. Nogla went pretty deep when he came on the channel. That was very nice of him. Mr. What's this fossil reserve list? Says Jeff Leon. How's it going, Jeff? So the way it works... I have 10 packs of Fossil Booster Packs, first edition, and we're going to open them all at the same time, like a box break almost. And so we have to sell off the remaining seven before we open them all up. That's how it works. And if you're talking about the Fossil Custom, uh, the way the Fossil Custom Reserve list works is when I sell 22 packs of the Fossil Reserve uh, Custom or Custom Boosters, we open all of those at the same time, and then one person will pull a Fossil Booster Pack out of those Custom Booster Packs. Just one person. That means 21 people will not pull... Uh, oh, look at that, Reverse Hollow Suicune. 21 people will not pull a Fossil Booster Pack. Nogala, as in the YouTuber? Yeah, Nogala was here the other day, and he popped in and bought, like, $10,000 of Pokemon cards. It was really shocking. Eternatus. Ooh. We've got the other Suicune. Look at that. <laughs> we got Hollow Suicune. You've got them both now. That's actually pretty cool. Hold on to that Suicune. One day, the Darkness Ablaze booster packs will be super expensive, and having that Suicune will be a nice thing. Okay, that was for our friend Edward Eaton. Bro, can I get a Shining Charizard GX, please? All right, I'm setting it off right now, Mr. Meme of Tom. Boop. It's nice having penny sleeves again. I don't have to be so careful with them. All right, double Suicunes and Eternatus VMAX. Mr. Edward Eaton, let's find your bag. Here it is. Your bag's already getting pretty fat. I want to buy a gaming PC. <clears throat> I want to buy a gamer girl. What are you talking about? Gaming PCs are cheap, mister. Next up, we got Cameron Andrew Andrews. He says, hey, mister, can I have four sun and moon base set? Four sun and moon base set. All right. One, two, three, four. Can you also live ship my polls and my Charizard VMAX PSA 10 under the name Energizer? Ah, Energizer. Give me a moment. How's it going, Energizer? There we go. You can buy Gamer Girls? I was here for the Nogla night. Ooh, look at this. A nice 10 on that Charizard. Now he said, can you also live ship my pulls? I think, Mr. Energizer, are you saying you should have a bag as well? Maybe that's what you're trying to say. Here it goes. One, two, three, and four. Sweet. Snip and sleep. I don't know if you guys knew this. We also, uh, in the past, we had a musician named Ryan Upchurch. He was watching the stream one time and he dropped a whole bunch of donations on me. So that was really cool. Ryan Upchurch. And then another one, Fortnite Focus popped in here uh, for uh, several nights. He also uh, purchased a number of cards. And then we also had, uh, what was his name? The the third guy, his name was Sam. Was it Sam H? Sam H also popped in. Brugsish Crocodile. 
And Bulldore. All right, Bulldore. No crazy hits there, Mr. Energizer. Let's go ahead and sleeve this up. Wasn't Brad Sheely in here one night? That's right. One time we were graced with the presence of Brad Sheely. So this is Cameron Andrews. And Mr. Cameron, maybe Cameron already has a bag under Cameron Andrews. Maybe that's what he means. That name sounds familiar. Chris, Benjamin, Christopher, Colton, Chris Garcia, Claudia... You guys will notice that I went ahead and made live shipping a dollar cheaper. Okay, we'll check this box too. Brian Boltianski, Christova, Brian Ochoa, Christian Moss, Brett, Brock. How do I purchase packs? How's it going, Strife? You'll want to look at the description. The description will be a menu. It will also give you a link to our Discord server, and that link will actually lead you right to the instructions channel. The instructions channel, if you just read that over, that will uh, explain the whole process. But it's pretty simple. Basically, you use PayPal to, to order cards. We're looking for Cameron Andrews. Cameron Posey? Christian Metal, Bisharp. No bag. Oh, my God. <laughs> No bag. Now, give me a minute. Let me go ahead and ship you. Let me make sure I got the right Cameron Andrews, because that's a pricey Charizard that I don't want to have to replace. All right. And let's see if stamps will work. <laughs> Can Cameron Andrew. Oh, very interesting. I don't have you in here even. So I'm going to go ahead and create. Actually, I should. I might have you under here in Energizer. Oh, here it is, Cameron Andrews Energizer. We've even got your email. So we've definitely shipped you before. Let's go ahead and print label. Print. I can't, I sent you a message on Discord. Thank you very much. Let's see what that message is. Since we're in the process of the live ship. All right, cool. So I'll be right back, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and live ship this. PSA 10 cherries are. Oh, mister. Mr. Cameron, you are live ship. Thanks for stopping in and saying hi. Pokemon were not printed in 1995. Uh, I, I don't think that's true. I think they were printed in 1995. You had like the uh, Cardos or um, was it Top Sun? I can't remember. There's some really old Pokemon cards. Okay, let's see, let's see. Man, that's a loud chair. Next up, we have... It's Mr. Claude Cavan. He says three live custom boosters. All right, you got it. Can we open magic cards? We could. Ooh, that's a fire energy. Wow, that looks fancy. Two. Oh, what's this? PSA 9, number 199. And a Veltal. Wow, those hollows that are coming out of here are pretty fancy. I'm liking these. So, Mr. Claude, it's your lucky night tonight. Let's see what you picked up. Oh, I might have to grab these. 
There we go. It says PSA 9 number 199. Oh. oh. Whoa, that, that got me. Because I actually have two cards here with the number 199. One of them's a PSA 9 and the other one's a PSA 10. And they're from completely different sets. But I can tell that you're going to be picking up this one right here. Oh. Japanese Neo Slow King. What a fancy card. So that's Vintage Slow King. Really fancy. I love the artwork. He says, wow. There we go. Look how fancy. And this goes into your bag, which is your bag up top. I feel like it was up top. One Nido Queen, one liter of gas. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to start selling ghastly. <laughs> Why does the reverse hollows these days look so bad? What are you talking about? I think they look great. That CGC 10 Charizard looks amazing. Well, yeah, he looks pretty good, too. Uh, it's because they have, like, the whole... I don't want to call this the Galaxy uh, holographic, but it's kind of like that, right? But it depends on which holographic set you're referring to. Some some reverse hollows look better than others, actually. All right, we'll toss this away now. And we're going to refresh. The Japanese reverse are a trip. How about the Legendary Collection? Those reverse hollows are crazy. Whoa, some kind of order came in. I think a large order came in. Listen to that Minecraft music. So let's see. Oh, here's Alex. So this is where we left off at. Mr. Jack Gray says two battle style. Okay. For Jack Gray, two battle styles. Vintage King right here. What? One, two. Love the Firecracker Reverse Legendary. Me too. Here's Bronzong and Bruxish. Oh my. Just two reverse hollows. Now, let's take a look at these reverse hollows. So, oh, that's a print line in it, but ignore the print line. Look at the texture. They're kind of cool. They got some texture to them, right? So, and the Charizard's just this bubbly, sort of like cosmic texture, whereas these reverse hollows, that's the water energy sign, and this is the metal energy sign. So, you know, they're just different. If they made all of the reverse hollows look the same, uh, they wouldn't feel very distinct from each other as collectibles. He goes, those are boring. <laughs> okay. All right, so Jack Gray. Where are we going to find you? Jeremy Helmstatter. Here we are, Jack Gray. You're in the overflow. I knew you weren't going to be in the main box. Mister, can I say that your voice doesn't match your face. You sound much older and mature, but you look on the younger side. Well, again, I am I am 32, so I'm not quite young anymore, but I'm not really that old either. How do I sound? Do I sound like this? Get off my lawn! <laughs> Next up, we have Rafael Aguilera. What's up, man? He says, hello, mister. Let's send out the other nest ball. Lol, I keep getting balls in my pokey packs. Also, did you receive my payment last night for five additional Sun and Moon uh, base packs? I don't want to cause a problem. Uh, I think I did. Wasn't that what we opened? Uh, so I thought that I thought that we opened up five more, and it was this guy right here. You're the newest member. What's up, Mikey? Was it the case that we you did even more? Let's go ahead and grab a card saver that we don't have. God damn it. I'll be back. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's not enough room in this room. All right, we got some card savers. He says, yes, but I wanted to make sure you got the payment. Oh, right. Give me a moment. 
I think we got it. If it's if it's the order after Tito, then yes. Okay, here we are. The stream ended before you could confirm it. Oh, we got a new member. It's Eddie Eaton. Hey, thanks, Eddie. I appreciate that. Now, Mr. Eddie, you have access to all of our very funny emojis, and you get a Pokeball next to your name, and that Pokeball can eventually turn into a Master Ball. So this is for Raphael. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We don't have to write anything on it. You know why? You've got so many cards that you've got a bag. So I just have to toss it in here because it's the same type of submission as all your cards. Look at Raphael's bag, guys. There's that Lugia, Ultra Ball. He's got Ultra Ball, Alakazam, Snorlax, Magcargo Tauros. Look at that. Damn. And those both come out of base set. Oh, that's cool, man. Nest Ball and Ultra Ball. That's why I like base set. It's such a cool set. Mr. Got a shout out from Rusty. Rusty's the best. I, I've been shouting him out for a while. He's a, he's a really good. He's been in this longer than I have, and his his quality his content's pretty good quality. Toss this over here. Claude Cavan. Claude Cavan says two darkness ablaze. What? Here we are. Yeah, I never got anything negative to say about him. Elon Muck indeed, many balls, big boy bag. Sneep. Look at those sneeps. Pack number one, Sima Sage, and pack number two, Pan Poor. No luck there. Was well, just two packs. So that's for Cloud. Co that's Cloud again? Is it Cloud? I think it's Cloud. Here we go, Mr. Cloud. Boop. Okay, after that, we have Trey Booker. He says, one live custom booster. Oh, Trey, I don't know, Trey. It was, the Slow King just came out. This could be something. Ah, unfortunately, it is Meowstic. That's a tough one. Mr. Trey. Trey Booker. Any evil packs open already? Uh, that's right. A bunch of them have been opened, and only Charizards have been pulled. You missed the Charizards, mister. Next up, we have another really large order from Edward Eaton. He says, three live customs and two lo Lost Thunders. Ah, Lost Thunder. Oh, doesn't this look nice? Who remembers Lost Thunder? Isn't that a nice set? One of my favorite sets ever. I wish I had a whole bunch of this sitting in a, in a box in a closet, because I don't, and I wish I did. Back when I started, you could buy up boxes of Lost Thunder for like just over $100. If I had done that, they'd all sell now for way more than $100. let us see, two Lost Thunders and three live customs. Mister, do you think the Evolutions Charizard will keep going up in price? Uh, definitely the tens will. I think the nines are probably going to, I think they're going to hold their value. I don't know if they'll go up in value unless somebody starts buying them all up off the market, but they've gone up in value pretty well already. Uh, it's possible that they continue to really go up in price. Here goes. It's a very affordable looking Charizard. Pack number one, pack number two. Oh, holographic Zapdos. And pack number three. Oh, it's just Litten. I'm sorry. Mr. Edwin. I'm sorry. Mr. Edward. The timing is just tough right now. Too many nines on the market. The pop is going to continue to explode. Yeah, there's a lot of nines. And the tens, on the other hand, I consider them pretty underpriced right now. And then also... If you do grade nine, it's not like the nine has no value either, okay? So at some point, the nine can always come down in price to a point where people will go, yeah, I'll buy up those nines. Here we go. We got Faba and Giratina. Ooh, that Giratina is looking pretty fancy. And on pack number two, what do we got? Mantine. Oh, man down, man down. So, mister, you're going to need a nice bonus pull from our friend Nogala. You ready? There's Tag Team Squirrel. That's actually really good. 
Staryu from Evolutions, Blitzel from Tag Team, Ponyard from Tag Team, here we go, Shiny Garchomp, I'll get you one more, just to be nice, and Charmander from Tag Team. Now, <laughs> that spider's still there. Uh, now, you got a lot of reverse hollows here. The Garchomp's legit, but also these, the Squirtle and the Charmander, these are reverse hollows from the Tag Team set. And would I grade these? Heck yes, I would. So all three of these right here. And the star is okay. Actually, the star is looking kind of nice too in terms of centering, but we won't know if it's a 10 or not. There you go. And where did I put your bag? I think I put you up top. Here we are. You're having kind of tough pulls today, but luckily no Nogala's got you covered. I got to say this though. The Nogala pity pulls are almost gone. They We were going through them. Next up, we've got Trenton. Trenton returns and says, back again, two Rebel Clash. Two Rebels. This guy's a Rebel. It's been weeks already. Back in my day, we didn't have any Nogala pulls. I know. Isn't that wild? Yeah, eventually they will run out. And then when they run out, um, we will be on a totally different playing field because you would just get cold pulls. <laughs> it would just be cold pulls. Back in my day, we had to live with our bad pulls. I know. <laughs> Luxio and... Phalanx. All right, one Phalanx V. Whoop. For Trenton. Trenton. Tyler. Where's Trenton? Here it is. Here you go, Trenton. Nogla needs another appearance. Nogla! I hear if you say his name in the mirror three times, he shows up and opens pokies. Back in my day, Evo was three for 15. Actually, I think we did five for 25 is what we did, right? Something like that. And now we have an order from our friend Arturo Perez. He says, can I get two Digimon packs? Just kidding. Can I get two Opus 11? All right, Opus 11 has been wildly popular the last few days, especially with our friend Arturo, who's been going deep. I think he wants the full art Tifa out of here. I've been sobbing, wishing Nogla and Trump <laughs> were back. Oh my God. Oh, how about the uh, conflict in the Middle East right now? You've got Israel and I guess like Hamas or something. Whoa, pulling the holographic Dragoon. That's cool, man. Take a look at that. Man, I really like this card. Her name is Ariana. And pack number two is... What? I, I've never even seen this one. What does it say down there? PR? RPR? What? I have no clue. Ridya? Keep the change, you filthy animal. What? <laughs> you felt the animal? Who was that? That was Nogla. Nah, that can't be the real Nogla. You just teasing me. <laughs> Let's see. Ridia. Very cool. Yeah, it's so weird. We have opened so many of these uh, Tifa packs and not ran into that card. And uh, I think I had a book pile somewhere for these. I'll set them here. Okay. What does that even mean? I've never seen this. RPR 51. I know that R stands for rare. Okay, very good. Dude, oh man, your bag's so large. You got a sack, man. We're gonna be putting you up top because your bag's so big. There we go. And you're up here with Connor Gillespie. Be nice, Connor. <laughs> Woo, we're at 62. Going deep. Okay. Doo -doo 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 -doo. We're going to go ahead and refresh the PayPal's. Carter says, I try. <laughs> Doo -doo 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 -doo. 
Do 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 do. What are we gonna open next? All right, where uh, here it is, Mr. Arturo. And now we have an order for Claude Cabin. He says fifty count card grader and live shipping. All right, let me think about that. So, Mr. Claude, let's grab your bag and your new slow king. How nice is that? And then you're gonna have a fifty count. I think that will still go first class. How about Doge today, guys? Doge is at 50 cents. It really has not recovered uh, from, from Elon Musk's Saturday Night Live when he called it a... What did he call it? I can't remember. He called it a hustle. That's what it was. What were you doing, Elon? All right, here we go. Print. He called it a hustle. Good evening, everyone. I found another. Da, 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 da. I couldn't buy from him. I'm loyal to you. Oh, thanks, Keith. These pokey, pokey guys ain't loyal. <laughs> I'm just teasing. So let's see. Claude Cabin. And here's your 50 count. Go ahead and wrap your cards up a little bit here. Thank you very much, Claude. After Claude, we have Jonas Rosado. He says, I have a bag and a book box. Three hidden fates. Hey, that's a big order. Mr. Jonas, going deep, huh? Give me a minute. It's all Elon Musk's fault for Doge going down. God damn it. <laughs> I knew it. You don't need to have a kid. You and Quip can call me your son. All right, but only if you'll accept. Only if you'll accept. Uh, inheritance of all the. Oh my God! There's spiders walking around. <laughs> oh! Oh! He's crawling toward my feet. <laughs> Ew! Oh, it's so gross. Good evening. The message was supposed to be a super chat. So now I'm scared because the spider is under the table and I don't want him to kiss me on the toes. Dude, he ran so fast. You forget how fast those things are. They're crazy fast for how small they are. He is under the table and... And get him to go away. All right, I got him to run away. He ran away in the other direction. Ew! <laughs> Did you know the previous owners actually warned us that we could get scorpions in the house? I was like, what? The spider wants to smooch him. Dude, that thing was running so fast. If I feel something crawling up my leg, I'm going to know exactly what it is. Just like the second Logan Paul box break. That's right. <laughs> Whew. I have some uh, I have some Doge coin. And I'm still up slightly with Doge, but not very much. I'm thinking about selling out, to tell you the truth. I never really liked Doge that much. It 
it's an inflationary currency and everyone who tries to tell you to buy you know crypto they're all like oh buy crypto because there's a limited amount of it there's a limited amount of it oh the us dollar is a scam because they can print as much of it as they want well it turns out doge is kind of like that anyways so and and all of a sudden you start hearing the crypto guys say stuff like oh being inflationary is good because it will force people to use the money rather than to hoard it you know what i mean and i'm like okay so what is it is inflationary bad or good you know they were making those cases and i think it's just because they want to see dogecoin succeed but it, it shows you that people will just say whatever they have to say you know what i mean to convince you to pour your money into something and you have to have a real reason to uh like something you know what i mean like i like pokemon cards but the reason's a lot more obvious is because Pokemon cards look good and because they're actually pretty uh, collectible, in my opinion. You can have them in a shelf and look at them. You can't really do that with Doge. You can't do that with Bitcoin or Ethereum. Oh, what do we got? Oh, mister, pulling shiny electrode. All right, very nice. That's for Jonas Rosado. There you go, Jonas. Jonas, you'll be one of the last few people to still have a bulk box. We're getting rid of bulk boxes. Go ahead and baggy that up. That was a nice round. You picked up, uh, you picked up shiny rock rough and then a, a full art shiny electrode. Have you ever heard the story of scorpion and the frog? Uh, and the frog. That's where the uh, frog goes swimming and the scorpion stabs the frog and the frog's like, "Why'd you do that? Now we're both gonna die." And the scorpion said, "It's because I'm a scorpion." So it's a pretty decent story. Let's see. Jonas Rosado. Jonas. I have that shiny in Pogo. What? How would you say the the story of the scorpion and the frog, how would you say that relates to the real world? Here's Electrode. How does it help you make better decisions in life? I guess you'd have to say you got to look out for those scorpions when it comes to, to people. But who is a scorpion? Next up is Kevin P. Lombardo. It's kind of an interesting argument because uh, basically the idea here is that the scorpion has no choice but to be itself. And so it's kind of like that no willpower argument. You know what I mean? The scorpion can't choose to be a good person because it's a scorpion. And so if you're thinking about the real world the same way, it is kind of a uh, depressing, don't trust spiders. It's kind of a depressing, you know, sort of statement, isn't it? It's saying if a person is bad, they're always going to be bad. It doesn't matter if they're saying they're going to be nice. It just doesn't matter. All right, here we are. One, two, three, four, five. G. Sama says, I think it's don't trust anybody. No, that's not true, because you could trust the frog. So the frog wasn't a bad guy in the story. The frog, in fact, was a good person. That was the whole point. The frog you could trust. It was the scorpion you couldn't trust. You don't like roaches? If a person is bad and does a bad thing, don't be surprised. Trust is earned. Well, I don't know if that was the moral of the story either. Uh, because the, st the scorpion then tells the frog, of course I've stung you, it's because I'm a scorpion, right? He's saying that is my nature. It's my nature to be a scorpion. And it's kind of suggesting you can't escape your nature, you know? If it was the frog and the fly, it would be different. <laughs> Sleep. A bad guy will always be bad. Yeah, that's that's basically the story. Accepting that bad things will happen. Don't even trust myself. We found the scorpion. <laughs> Sneep. All right, we'll throw this away. Boop. Old PC. Pack number two is... Pull me some hot ones. We're going to get some hot ones. Simiseer. Pack number three. Am I getting the Japanese exclusive EV set? That EV set is going to be an exclusive set because if it is, that's very interesting. Charizard V. You know, I've been trying to learn more about what uh, Japanese sets were exclusive. I know about Tag Team and I know about the Japanese Versus set from a long time ago. Sadly, 
I had not purchased any of those. I wish I had when they were affordable. So versus and tag team, what other sets are exclusively Japanese? Does anyone know where I could find a list of that? Ooh, look at that. You got non holo Lugia. Next pack, we have Mareep. And Big Paracel Tapu, Tapu uh, Bulu or Coco. It's Nasty Pelosia. Nancy Pelosi, a frog or a scorpion. Nancy, she's definitely um, the wasp. <laughs> okay, there's Stunfisk. Dream League is a good Japanese set. That Lugia is epic. Cold Gang on standby. Nancy Pelosi's a roach. Oh, man, she's deeply unpopular on the right. Just like, uh, just like uh, Mitch McConnell is deeply unpopular on the left. Ariados. So look at this, mister. Picking up that good Charizard V, and you got a Galarian Stunfisk as well. Very nice. Kevin P. Lombardo. Kevin would be in the K box. Here we are. Sweet. Who's Ant Man? All politicians are scorpions. I think there's a degree of truthfulness to that, but I, I don't think that's all true. I think that uh, you get different kinds of leaders. You know, some leaders are pretty good. Nancy is deeply unpopular, end quote. N Nasty Pelosi is worse than Kamala. The right hates Mitch, too. <laughs> yeah, to, uh, especially lately, he became pretty unpopular. Um, the Republican Party is kind of having a split a little bit. Uh, Liz Cheney is out, for example, where she's about to be. And it's pretty much the, in the Republican Party, you're either in the party of Trump or the never-Trumpers. And so the Republican Party is split that way. It's kind of interesting. Okay, next we've got... David Medalia, who says three live custom boosters and four Sword and Shield base set. Sword and Shield base set. Where am I going to find those? One, two, three, four. <clears throat> Mitch McConnell's weak on his Republican views. Well, he's not weaker than, uh, what, what's his name? I'll try it. Mitt Romney? Oh, man, Mitt Romney. He is definitely... How is he not a liberal? You would almost think Mitt Romney. The other guy, too, uh, he ran for president. I don't remember his name. There's another Republican who's basically a liberal. And then on the other side, you have, like, Tulsi Gabbard. She's almost a Republican. You could tell she's, like, flirting with being a Republican, but her policies are still very liberal. Pack number one. Pack number two. Hey, that's a Jirachi hollow. That's pretty cool. And pack number three. Not a hit. Not a hit. Something's in that box, but I don't know what it is. Not a hit. Be careful out there. Flip, flop, bend the knee, Romney. Being bipartisan doesn't make you a liberal. I'm bipartisan. Am I not a liberal? All right, here we go. The only thing I believe in is pokey, Pokemons. Because I live in Pokestan. So life's very easy over here. Sneep. I feel like Biden will pass away and Kamala's going to take over. That's right. And then you'll have to listen to the Camilla laugh every day. <laughs> Where's Elio? What do we have? Frost Moth. And Zacian V. Okay, so at least your Sun and Moon, I'm sorry, Sword and Shield base set packs are going all right. How about this last pack? And Obstagoon. Uh, but those were pretty cold packs from the live customs, so we're going to get you a pity poll, okay? Mister, I sent a crypto order. Okay, give me a moment. Actually, you know, if it comes in fast enough, it can go out with your other stuff. You want to tell me the amount? Oh, here it is. Oh my God, that's a lot. There you go. 12 live? You got it. Now remember, the way it works is I can't open those until we're done with the current list and I, I I put you next in line before hitting refresh. That's the rules I'm going with. I think those are good rules. Bernie would have been a great president. Bernie Sanders, the top 1% of the 1%. <laughs> I like to tease a little bit. Here we go. Whoop. Misty, all right, what a hot pull. Misty's determination for David Medalio. David, where's David's bag? Jeff Leon, are you up top?
Finnegan. Mr. 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 There's a reason the Dems didn't want Bernie. Okay. Is it because he was too awesome? <laughs> I'm just kidding. David Medalia, you guys know I am the opposite of a socialist. I really, really like free market capitalism. Not crony capitalism, by the way, which is always one of the problems with capitalism is it can lead to crony capitalism. So you have to be on your feet and protect it. Bernie died. What are you talking about? To Cola Feed? Cola Feed? What? Greetings from Chile. What's up, mister? So next up, we have Trey Booker. He says, let's go for two more live custom boosters. Let's do it. Pack number one. Oh, I think this is a good one. I can always tell because there's only one card there, so it's very thin. And it is, ah, 10 breakpoint. All right. And you can see the little marks say that's an expensive pull. And Crobat. Very good. So you know you've gotten an expensive pull out of the box when you get these little marks on the side. 10 breakpoints. Breakpoints. One, two, three, four, five, oh, six. That must be from a long time ago. Uh, where can I place this? Here, let me leave it up here for now. Seven, eight, nine, ten. It's all Kabuki Theater. We're all on the same team, working towards the same goals, answering for the same masters. Literally WWE for adults. Bro. <laughs> you know, I hear that sometimes, the whole, like, unity message. Oh, we need to stop fighting each other. It's the corrupt corporations and the corrupt politicians. We need to fight together. They're dividing us on purpose. I don't think that's actually true. I really think that Americans are divided on ideological ideas. Um, they're divided on religious ideas. They're reli we're divided on uh, financial ideas. And I think that it's more the case that the politicians reflect this divide in the people. So some people will say that it's kind of like a top-down problem where the politicians politicians turn us into who we are. I think there's some degree of that, but I think it kind of goes both ways. We also already hold certain beliefs that we then use to vote those people into power. So they keep getting to spout their whatever it is they're spouting. All right, here we go. You want NFL Select. So this is for our friend, Mr. Trey Booker. He's picking up Bay Leaf and a Hollow Slow King to get started. Pack number two. Camera up. NFL Select. Here's Misty's Determination and another Slow King. Oh my gosh. So many quality hollows. Crack those CGCs and send them to Beckett. <laughs> you think any of them have a chance for the black label? Wouldn't that be funny if they did come back black label? Here's Spritzy. Spritzy. Buy, let me buy packs from you. Sounds good, mister. We do have some basketball on the way. I don't have any NFL cards on the way yet, but we should do that. I really am looking to expand this channel into having lots and lots of, of card sets. Okay, what do we got here? Radicate Break. Oh, mister, that was the one. That's the one we're looking for. So you've got two hits so far. Let's see if we can get a third hit. I think we can. Trevenant, you did it. Okay, here's Trevenant Break. Very nice. Three packs left. Scissor Spirit Link. Now, I want to remind you guys, these break points actually have a full art Skyla in them. So he has a chance for that Skyla. Oh, man, you just pulled, like, three breaks in a row. That's Luxray break. That's actually not bad. You've got four hits, basically, in ten packs. And last oh, oh, mister, you're luckier than you know. That's the Golden Gyarados. That's one of the best cards in the set other than the Skyla. Woo! That was a hot round in the live custom boosters. Mister, that's an expensive Pokemon card. And that's for our Mr. Trey Booker. All right, Trey. Trey, take a look at this. Ten packs. You've got f basically five pulls. Now, these are all just okay. But then you also get this Golden Gyarados. It's the Golden Goose. You did it. <laughs> yeah, that's a big pull. Let's find your bag. 
Mr. Trey. I've been chasing that damn card. Well, you know, and there may be another one in there. Uh, these are not packs out of a booster box. They're packs out of a power collection. Uh, this is one of the best cards in the set. You notice it's a red Gyarados. That's a shining Gyarados. And again, Skyla's in here. Ho-Oh is in here as well. Uh, Scissor is in this set. It's just a really nice set. Mr. Trey. Let's leave that on the table for a while. I want to look at that for a while. Now, it's not a Scalameme's turn yet, is it? Nope, there's two more people. In, there's one more person ahead of you. Raphael says, straight to it. Lost Thunders, mister. All right. So, Lost Thunders is a pricier set, and you are already picking up some Lost Thunders. Here it is. Lugia and Celebi. Let's see what you got. I have that Gyarados. Is it worth grading? Uh, yes. <laughs> I found some break points on Dollar General and pulled two uh -oh, full arts. Is the queue long? Not at all. Not at all. Oh, another. Oh, look at this. That's the Lugia GX. That's a very hot pull, Mr. Raphael. All right. Wow, it looks well-centered, too. So this goes for a lot of money as well. It's just a GX card, but it's the Lugia GX from Lost Thunder. So that's probably the best GX card. The only other GX card that might come close is the Suicune, but I'm pretty sure the Lugia actually goes for more money than the uh, Suicune. So I know you don't like your hollows. You're gonna donate them. If you ever change your mind on that, let me know. Lugia. Man, what a nice card. Hot pull after hot pull. Okay. I can see that the person who actually made the donation was not Nogala. It was Daniel Coronado trying to pull a fast one on us. <laughs> now, we're ready for Escalameme, and he said 12 packs of the live customs. Are you ready, Escalameme? Here it goes. 12 packs, he said. Pack number one. You pick up Gyarados GX. Pack number two. Raichu GX. Pack number three. Zamazenta. Pack number four. Oh, what do we have here? 13 Battle Styles. Pack number five is Weezing. Number uh, six is Rowlet. Six, seven is White Kyurem. Eight is Hariyama. Nine is Bruxish. Ten is Rainbow Energy. Oh my gosh. Eleven is Crobat. I think this is 12. Let's recount. Oh no, mister. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This is your last one. And this is 12. Landing on timer ball. That was a mind sweep. Oh, no. Mister. Well, I tell you what. We'll get you a few of those pity pulls. We'll also open up these 13 battles, uh, battle styles. Let's make sure those battle styles aren't like crazy hot before we get too uh, worked up. They could be crazy hot. And then your, your luck would be balancing out. But you got to remember, in the live custom packs, it is possible for me to do... Uh, as low as 15 cold packs and one hit. And typically that'll occur when there's something hot in the box or just something pricier in the box. But then again, he, he actually pulled the Battle Styles four packs in as well. So that's part of it. But you know, when you buy a large order, your hope is that the last pack or the second to the last pack is gonna be a hot pack. And if that doesn't happen, it means you're just kind of, oops, it just means you're kind of sweeping. Let's see what, oh. Come on now. Let's see what happens in these 13 battle styles before we feel too bad about it. You might get real lucky. 13 of them, huh? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. No one said catching them all was going to be easy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Battle styles. The best pulls in the battle style set include mostly the alternative arts of Urshifu and Tyranitar and Empoleon. Uh, but then you also have the full art girls. There's three girls in this set. And if you can pull the full arts of those girls, that would be nice. 
Uh, but also there's a golden houndoom and a golden octillery too. Now the worst pulls would be like, what would be the worst pulls? Isn't isn't there a cricketoon? There's like a cricketoon. There's also mustard. I don't think mustard's ever gonna be really hot. He's just, he's a guy. He's an old guy too. 13 battle style. Hey mister, how you doing tonight? What's up Alexio? Okay, pack number one. Fomantis, pack number two. Horsey, pack number three. Victory Bell, pack number four. Onyx, pack number five. Here's Slowpoke Kingdra. Now, just imagine if I had no pity pulls, too. This would just be your pulls. Okay, there is a Cricketune, and again, that's one of the worst pulls. I don't think anyone at all is simping for Cricketune. What is he? He's a Cricket? He's not even a good-looking Cricket. It looks like a Cricket with a mustache. All right, Spiro. Do I own a binder of Pokemon cards? I do have a binder, but I don't really use it. What do we have here? We got Remoraid. Mister, I don't feel so good. The villain. Three packs left. Conkledur. Oh, no. Two packs left. Fan of Waves. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. 13 packs, and all he got was two V cards. So he absolutely got wrecked here. Um, let me go ahead and test this over on the side. You got rickety wrecked. Now, just remember, if we didn't have Nogula pulls, I said this earlier, you would just end up with what you pulled here, you know? Because those pity pulls aren't free. They just, uh, they're donations. The entire pity pull box. Now, <laughs> we'll get you a few pity pulls. <laughs> we'll try and get you a solid pull out of there. Let's see. Buffalon, timer ball. So you got a bunch of hollows. And then you did also actually pull these GX cards. So you got Raichu, Gyarados, Urshifu, and Krikatoon so far. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Let's go get you some stuff. Rapidash from Team Up. Zapdos from Team Up is actually a nice pull. Here's Pidgey. Lots of Team Up hollows. Here we go. That's Reshiram Amazing Rare. I'll go a little deeper just for you, okay? You've, you've opened a lot of cards over here. Here's a Keralis and a Moltres from Team Up. Okay, so we went a little extra deep. But you know, when we go a little deep, that means that it makes it harder for someone else to get a Pity Pull because we'll run out sooner. There we go. You got Keralis. I, I do like this Zapdos. It's a little bit better. <laughs> That's a full art. And the Reshiram Amazing Rare is not bad either. Now, Scalameme, I should be able to get this out with your other pulls. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. That was a tough round, I guess. That's how RNG works, doesn't it? Sometimes it's very cold. For someone to pull hot, somebody else has to pull kind of cold, right? And we will get these all out together. Hey, mister, is the stock market going to crash? It could. It's possible for it to crash. You know, some really smart investors like um, Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, they were selling off stock because they believed that the stocks were overpriced. And what you can do when you sell off your stock is you can use that cash to buy up something like uh, a commodity. So why would you buy a stock rather than a commodity? Well, a stock is ownership of a business, whereas a commodity tends to just be a tends to just be like a good that you hold on to. So you could call Pokemon cards a commodity if you wanted. I think. I think I'm using the term correctly, right? Well, crypto crash. Yeah, maybe that that's another thing where we just don't know. Um but so when you're buying a stock, you're expecting the stock to basically pay dividends. Okay, so a stock might cost $50 each, and there might be 3 million of those. Well, 3 million could be like a loan estimate, but there might be 3 million stocks out there, and they might be 50 bucks each. And then you buy them because they pay a dividend. 
which is a portion of the profits. So when uh, Target makes money and you own Target stock, you're privy to a little bit of those profits. And that just depends on how many stock you own. So you will get like, let's say you have 10 stocks. Well, you get 10 times the profit, uh, which is the, the dividend. And this is where the value of a stock comes from. So you're supposed to own stocks that pay out. Uh, and some people don't buy stocks that way. Some people buy stocks because they expect the demand for that stock to go up. Now, on the other hand, you have more like uh, commodities. And commodities might include, um, well, commodities are a whole bunch of stuff, I'm pretty sure. It could include, well, let me look it up. This is funny because I've always kind of understood what commodities are, but I don't have like a strong definition. Hold on. Let me get you a good definition. Commodities. Because I don't want to I don't want to mess this up. A commodity is a basic good used in commerce that is interchangeable with other goods of the same type. Commodities are most often used as inputs in the production of other goods or services. The quality of a given commodity may differ slightly, but it's uh, essentially uniform across producers. Okay, and so a commodity could be something like Oops. A commodity could be something like steel or lumber or even uh, grain. You know, it could be like, like food that you're going to use. Uh, and then I, I'm not as sure about these other ones, but I think we count land as a commodity. Uh, and we I think we count gold and maybe even Pokemon cards as a commodity. So these could go by different names, but I, I, you could even try to call gold like a currency. You could call crypto a currency if you want. But I think that the government treats them as a commodity. I'm not sure about that. But yeah, so stock is ownership of a company and you get a little bit of profit. That's where the stock has value. A commodity is not like that. A commodity is not like ownership of a company. What you're doing is you're owning something like steel or you're owning lumber or you're owning grain from a farm or maybe you're owning farmland. And the reason you might own these instead is because you think that the stocks are overpriced. If you think that the stock price is too high, then you go, okay, I'm going to pour my money into something else. I'll pour it into steel because I think steel is underpriced. Okay. And that's how smart guys with money make lots more money because uh, they start out with some money and then they invest it. Uh, and how do you understand if a stock is overpriced? Basically, what you do is you go, how expensive is the stock relative to the amount of profit that the stock pays out? It's a little more complicated than that. Sometimes it's like, also, do you expect the stock to go up in value, like capital gains? Capital gains is when the stock goes up in value and you're already holding it. So it's a combination of capital gains and dividends, and that's how you decide whether or not it's overpriced. If you think it's overpriced, you should sell it. You should sell it, and then you should pour your money into something else like crypto or gold or especially Pokemons, which is the only thing worth buying. We all know that. Uh, but yeah, so that's how smart guys like Warren Buffett and Bill Gates make all their money. And, and Warren Buffett's really good at just jumping to a different stock. He'll just jump to a different company. All right. I, I noticed we just lost like 15 viewers. Real exciting. People <laughs> I don't think people like to learn about that stuff. Next up, we've got, uh, oh, right. We just finished helping Luke Zimmerman, so we need to refresh. Max says, and land. Yes, we listed land as one of the commodities. So a commodity is like a good. It's not a business, and a stock is a business. Those are really important things to understand. I feel like, how can you, how can you get wealthy if you don't understand some of those things? Because those are really basic to know. Okay, where do we leave off at? Here's Raphael. He opened up the, oh no, that's a different order from Raphael. So not over here. Let's scroll backwards. Here it is. Next up, we've got Trenton. He says, for Phantom Rage. Phantom Rage. Oh, those are Yugi's. All right, Yugi's. We haven't opened Yugi's in a little while. We haven't opened up Phantom Rage Yugi's. Give me a second, I gotta go get them. One, two, three, four. All right. Mr. Trenton.
So you might buy a commodity if you think that the commodity is very underpriced or if you think that the commodity is going to go up in price pretty dramatically. And so if you think that your stocks are overpriced and the commodities are underpriced, you could sell your stocks off and then go buy a commodity. And that might have been what somebody like Bill Gates is trying to do right now. What do we got? Virtual World Roshi. Lao Lao. Pack number two. Dogmatica Aishion. Oh my gosh. Which modern Pokemon cards do you think are overvalued right now? Overvalued? Good question. Well, I thought that one of the most overvalued cards that I saw was the delivery Pikachu, and I was right. Because he was selling for like over a thousand bucks. I think he was selling at some point for thousands of bucks as a PSA 10. And I'm like, that's not right. That's a crazy high price for a card that just came out. It's not even, he's not 20 years old. And virtually all of them are going to get graded. And many of them are going to be 10s. You know what I mean? My Utent missed. Mister. All right. Oops. Oh, no. He's been dropped. Well, you know what that means. I got to get you a bonus pack. Bonus pack? I should have some of these sitting around over here. I don't think he took any damage. He dropped like a quarter of an inch. The truth is I just want to give you a bonus pack. <laughs> Nobody's opening up these Phantom Rage packs. I just want to show my appreciation that you're opening them. You ready? UA Hyper Stadium. All right, nothing crazy on the bonus pack. I want to see a Starlight Rare come out of the Phantom Rage. Wait till Delivery Charizard releases. I got to have them. I'll buy them for $7,000. <laughs> Trenton Conger. Trenton. Here we go, Trenton. I think McDonald's will drop, but appreciate a lot over time, though. What? What are you talking about? You talking about the 25th anniversary McDonald's cards? Yeah, I don't know about those. Next up, we got Connor Gillespie. He says, two evolutions for my guy, Earth Savior, and one shiny star for me. Wow. Is he giving you shiny stars? Holy... So, Mr. Connor Gillespie, we'll start with your shiny star. Sneep. Mr. Connor. You should have said you're getting. Oh, Cinderace. And shiny Snom. Very cute. He's got his little butt face. I feel like Chilling Rain will have better long term value than Battle Styles. Battle Styles is dookie. Which one is Chilling Rain again? Is Chilling Rain the one with the uh, birds coming out? Or is. Is that the one where the legendary Pokemon rides another horsey or something like that? I don't know. Connor. Mr. Here we are. Connor Gillespie. You know, every set that comes out for Pokemon can't have Charizard in it. It can't have, like, the hottest card ever. So the Ice Horse one, I got you. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of that legendary Pokemon. Maybe other people are, but I he has not grown on me so far. He looks too strange for me. Earth Savior. Dookie Styles. Chilling Rain is the next English set. Oh, okay. So then it might have the birds in it, is what you're telling me. Sneep. Chilling Rain isn't Matchless Fighters? I think it will be. You have to understand the Japanese sets and the English sets uh, are disjointed from each other. They don't, they don't release in the same way. So probably we'll get some or most of Matchless Fighter, but we'll also get more of the set that comes out after Matchless Fighter 2. We got Magmar and Slowbro. The Horsey set has some sweet alternative arts. Mr. Chilling Rain is both Matchless and Jap Black Silver Lance. Okay, that makes sense. C -c -c combo set Ponita, Vulpix, Beedrill, Machoke. No other pulls in here. It was a little rough. Mister, look at the set list. It's amazing. It's amazing. Sounds good. Now, where would I have placed Earth Savior? Oh, I see him. Hold on. Earth Savior. Where did that spider even come from, man? God, those spiders are nasty. I'm going to set up like a spider trap under the table because I don't want any spiders crawling on my legs while we're streaming. Still probably better than the ants we had back at the condo, but 
I don't know. What would you guys rather have crawl up your leg, an ant or a spider? I feel like I'd rather have an ant crawl up my leg. Maybe I didn't know how good I had it. <laughs> okay, next up, we've got Jack Gray, who says, One Darkness, can you explain what we can pull from the Detective Pikachu packs? Hi, Jack. Uh, the Detective Pikachu packs, uh, I could show you one. Here, let me just show you one. Easier to just show you. So here's a Detective Pikachu pack. And they give you like four or five cards. They're all holographic. And you have a small, sh or you don't have a small shot. You have a large shot at pulling uh, Charizard. So here's the Detective Pikachu himself. And I'll sleeve that up because I'll actually grade that. Okay, Detective Pikachu himself. And uh, then you get a lot of cards like this. Nubble, Magikarp, Bulbasaur. So every pack has four holographic cards in it. And if you're lucky, you pull holographic Charizard, holographic Mewtwo, Holographic Greninja, and Holographic Ditto. So those are like the special rares in the set. I don't open enough of this for myself. I should open some sometime. Okay, so now you know. And he wanted a darkness of balls. Let's get you some darkness. Here we are. This is for Jack Gray. Sneep. Mr. Jack, just a Dartrix. I'm sorry, Jack. Jack, 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 you're over here. Here you are, I found you. <laughs> oh no, that sucks, nothing worse than a cold shower. No, it's so cold. Now we have our friend Kevin P. Lombardo, who says, Two shiny star and live ship for me, mister. Gotta get that fancy metal card home ASAP. ASAP. Okay, we got two shiny stars right here. You ready? Sneep. I wonder if they would use the alternative cards for the build and battle for chilling. Nah, they wouldn't do that. Blastoise, what is the large live custom at? I believe it's at like 18 or something. It might be 19, actually. It's moving. It's moving slowly, but it's moving. Look at this Sation. Oh, he's so nice. And Eevee, there's an Eevee code card. And you pull Ditto. Oh, man. Those were not as hot as I'd hoped. <laughs> All right, we'll toss this over here. I do like that Gengar Hollow, though. He's really cool. I wouldn't mind having a 10 of that, would you? So, Mr. Kevin, he also said live shipping, right? Here we are. Wasn't the large just pulled? Didn't think there was much in there yet. Yeah, I don't remember when the large was last pulled. Why isn't there a Pokemon Crypto Coin? I think there is, but I wouldn't buy any because I would expect, I would expect Nintendo to sue if it ever got too large. And we know Nintendo sues when you use their, uh, in, in, what do they call those? Intellectual property rights or something like that. Okay, Mr. Kevin. Gosh, I hope I never run over my cat. I really roll back and forth quite a lot here. Looks like we've never shipped you before, so let's go ahead and grab your address. Oops, come on now. So in your address, uh, you have part of the address that just says left. I don't know if that's something the mailman's gonna accept. Let's go ahead and adjust the label. Let's see what stamps does to it. Yeah, I mean, they want to modify the address to say left right under your name, as if left was the street address. Uh, I'm a little uncomfortable with printing this label. He says, yes, that's my duplex. All right, I'm going to send it out as left.
We'll grab this. And we'll grab this. And I will run off and put this in a box for you, mister. Kevin, it's on the way. All right. So after Kevin, we have Adam Vinzen, who says one live custom YOLO snipe. You got it. One YOLO snipe. Ah, but it's not. It's just a Rangaroo and a non hollow Mewtwo. Sorry, Adam. I bet it was the next one. The next one's the snipe. That's how it actually goes, Adam. Mr. Collect Spiders. <laughs> I used to when I was a kid. I, I had a whole jar full of spiders. And uh, I would let them crawl on my hand and everything. I'm older now, and I just don't care for them. They're too unpredictable. You never know what they're going to do. Emmanuel Panetta says, how's it going? Two Unified Minds and a Life Pack. You got it, Mr. Emmanuel. Two unis. Let's get these unis. Here they are. Mr. Collects Digimon on the down low. That's right. Don't tell anyone. I'm secretly down talking Digimon so I can buy them all up on the market. And then I'll gloriously praise them later. I'll be like, Digimons are the best. And I will already have gone deep on them. Just like the crypto guys. <laughs> so you ever feel like the crypto guys do that? They like uh, talk trash on one crypto. Then they buy a bunch of it and say, oh, I've been converted. You should all buy it now. It's great. You turn boat. Oh, mister, that's pretty cool. Mister, I have your hands framed on my wall? Oh, my God. <laughs> Here we go. What do we got? Oh! <laughs> Adam, the next pack was the snipe. I'm so sorry, Adam. This goes to our friend Emmanuel Panetta. Congratulations. He pulls PSA 10, number 199. And uh, no, that's not Slow King. This card just happens to share the same number as Slow King. Remember, there was a Slow King in here. Here it is. Rainbow Caparaja from Rebel Clash. All right, there you go, Mr. PSA 10. Very nice. Mr. <laughs> you are off by one. And then Emmanuel Panetta gets the snipe. There we go. Is this from Minecraft? Yes, it is. Excalameme as well. I'm sorry, Excalameme. That's really tough, man. There it is. Uh, and let me jump over here. We got to find Emmanuel Panetta now. Eric Shives. You see, Earth Savior kind of takes up half the box there. Let's pull that out for a moment. Estuardo, Emmanuel, Emmanuel Panetta. Here we are. So you also got your two hollows from Unis. Go ahead and pop these in here. Hello, I am from Chile. He's from Chile. Hello, I am from Brazil. I couldn't snipe on Pokey. It's always the people who pull the fire who are not expecting to snipe. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> that happens more often than you think. All right, congratulations. Real solid pull. Now we've got Mr. Arturo Perez. He says, for Opus, what is a cheap food that you love to eat? Uh, I love ramen noodles, and I eat them all the time. What I tend to do is I'll get like a nice protein, like a sausage or a ham or even like a chicken breast, and then I'll make up a yummy ramen, and I'll put the meat in with it. Uh, and I'll even have a little tofu with it and seaweed and rice seasoning and sriracha sauce. 
and I'll boil up some eggs. And it's just so filling, especially if you get, you guys can actually like shop online for ramen uh, uh, packs, dried ramen that they buy in, in Asia rather than the cheap gross stuff that they serve at your local grocery store. So your local local grocery store probably has like uh, whatever, like Maruchin or whatever. I don't know, the top ramen. Those are terrible. They're low quality, cheap, un very unhealthy, very bad tasting ramen. Well, you can research which ramens are most popular for tasting like authentic ramen and order those online. And since they're a dry food, they can actually ship it to you. You know, it's not refrigerated. So it's pretty cheap to ship a high quality ramen. And uh, yeah, at that point, you can have some really yummy ramen at home. You can also make your own ramen. That's right, Raphael. Uh, I've done that uh, with boiling the bones and all that stuff. Yeah, I've made, I've done my best at making some authentic ramen at home. And there's some really good cooking channels these days that teach you exactly how to make it. So you just have to follow the steps. Okay, Arturo with four opus. Big fan of ramen. Big fan. One, two, three, four. Which ramen do I, uh, well, I could probably make you a list, uh, but I couldn't name them off the top of my head. Give us a brand of good, authentic, dry ramen. Uh, I would I would say, see, I don't know their names. I just know what the packages look like. Steep. Also, you can look around for a local Asian grocery store and just go to their ramen aisle and just start buying them up and trying them for yourself. There's so much variety that you don't get if you just go to like uh, Walmart. But if you were to go to Walmart, you might have, there is a brand in Walmart that's not bad. It's, a, it's in a green package. I see. I don't even remember the name of it. But what you don't want to buy? Oh, what do we got here? Mute. That's like almost Mewtwo. What you don't want to buy is just like the regular Maruchin. There's so many gross, terrible brands that are like the default brand in regular American grocery stores. Here's Journey, Journey, and nothing too crazy. Okay, Journey. And finally. You've got Red 13 and Mira and Fiona and Ridya. <laughs> There's the Ridya non hollow. Crazy. Boop. All right, very nice. Mr. Arturo. I think we put you up top, didn't we? With Mr. Connor. You grew up in Pokistan? He grew up on the streets of Pokistan. There we go. Yeah, I'm a big fan of ramen. Okay, and now we've got Fergie's Cave, who has quite a large order. He wants five Lost Thunder. Oh, Fergie's Cave, five of them, huh? One, two, three, four, five. Good luck with your pulls, Mr. Fergie Cave. Do I believe in demons? I am a firm non-believer in spiritual things. I don't believe in demons. I don't believe in angels. I don't believe in ghosts. I'm a firm non-believer in those things. One, two, three, four, and a five. Sneep. Mr. I see the shadows in the dark. <laughs> Here goes, Mr. Fergie. I only believe in Pokemon. Here's Girafferig. That's right, Mr. Ever. <laughs> Xerneas. Nice. Xerneas Prism. I only believe in science. <laughs> Here's Zorora. But, you know, uh, my wife was going to sleep with the lights on tonight. She had the lights on in the bedroom. Uh, and uh, she's... she's um. She's similar to me in that she doesn't really believe in that stuff, but she, she still gets too scared. I told her we'll get some Christmas lights and, and hang them up in the bedroom. She, we had like a, a, well, actually, yeah, so there's a little story today. There was this really loud crash, and we thought it came from upstairs. We thought one of the cats had knocked the TV over. So we ran up upstairs to see a broken TV, right? But it wasn't broken. There was no knockdown TV. The cat had not knocked anything down. So we're like, what was that? It was so loud. We went back down to the family room 
and hung out. And then we were playing around with one of the cats and we followed it into the basement. And I was just playing with the cat. It was the little gray cat. And my wife lets out this blood curdling scream and told me to get over there right away. You know, like something extremely bad had happened. So I jumped over and there's this huge knocked over piece of furniture. It's not a furniture, it's more like a painting, but it's like the painting that's so big and so heavy, it's heavier than a couch, it's a mosaic. And the previous owner says, you want us to remove the mosaic from the basement? And we said no, because it was just leaned up against the wall. So we had this really, really large, really heavy mosaic, and it was leaned up against the wall. And it had fallen over somehow, even though it weighs like 200 pounds, it had fallen over. Um, and my wife was like 100% sure it was the mods. That's right. My wife was like 100% sure that if I lifted it, we were going to find uh, the white cat crushed underneath it, you know, because her thoughts immediately were one of the cats knocked something down and, oh my gosh, uh, the white cat must have knocked over the mosaic and gotten crushed by it. And the white cat was actually in that room and she was so scared. The cat was scared to death. She wouldn't even let me come near her. She was so scared. So I think she did knock it down. I think what happened was it was leaning up against the wall, really, really like, you know, without a tilt. You know how like when you leave something, like a pencil, right? If you lean a, a pencil up like this and it's and it's got no, it's leaned up exactly flesh with the, or is that the word? I think it is, flesh with the wall. It's gonna fall over like this, right? You kind of have to, to, to have something lean and stand still, you kind of have to leave it at a tilt like this. So I think the mosaic was, was like this and the cat must have jumped on top of it and pulled it down because it fell down this way and it actually broke a pipe downstairs. So we have to get that repaired. It was that large and that heavy that it broke a pipe. And uh, so anyways, my wife thought that we were going to lift it up and find a dead crushed cat underneath it. And she was so shook by that. Uh, it, and by the way, that did not happen. Like I said, the white cat was in the room, but she she looked scared, but fine. Uh, but she was so shook by that uh, that she went to sleep tonight with the lights on because she couldn't fall asleep with the lights off. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, it's it's just kind of interesting. I think some people are a little more sensitive to that kind of stuff. But for me, I was like, no, she's fine. The cat's right there. What are you? <laughs> There's nothing to be upset about. Cat's not crushed at all. It wasn't the cats. It was the aliens. That's right. It was the aliens. <laughs> Fergie's cave. Now, I feel like Fergie's cave is in the overflow, but I'm checking this table box first. How does that make sense? Mr. Nick requests you keep the non-hits. Nick? Who, which one's Nick? Is Nick Fergie? Let's find Fergie. Evan Shea. Ah, Fergie's cave. Here it is. Sweet. Oh, Nick says, yep. Here we go. You don't want Aether Foundation employee? Mister, what's wrong with you? If they is more bangs, it's likely spirits. That's right. <laughs> I told my wife, I told my wife that the house was haunted, like, uh, like paranormal activity. Did you guys watch that scary movie? paranormal activity and she knows i'm joking and she knows that there is no such thing as paranormal activity right so but the thing is she was still so shaken up by it that she couldn't go to sleep without the lights on next up we've got david medalia who wants 12 sword and shield base oh mister you said the magic words one two three four five six seven how come no hot tub stream oh my gosh we need hot tub stream I 100% believe and will never live somewhere haunted. <laughs> I always see stuff moving on its own. <laughs> That's too much. It's Haunter. <laughs> Wait till kitchen cupboards are open. <laughs> oh my God. When I go to sleep, I should open all the cupboards and all the drawers. And then I should totally pretend that I don't know. I'll be like, no, I didn't open those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. She's not going to believe me, though. She's going to know I'm playing a, a prank on her. One, two, three, four, five. There we are. Sword and shield base. No, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wrong box. Wrong box. That's Sun and Moon. You guys are right. I'm just, 
I'm so into this conversation we're having. All right, sun and moon base. 12 of them, huh? Whoa. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There we go. Ding, 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 ding. Machoke me, daddy, nice and hard with that PP chew. Machoke me, daddy, nice and hard with that PP chew. Elon Musk. Oh my God. <laughs> with that PP chew. The Adventures of TCC, The Ghostbusters, Haunted House Mister, Sell, Sell, Sell. <laughs> I'll open all the cabinets, all the drawers, and then when she goes downstairs to have her breakfast, she'll be like, what? Oh, and I'll take all the chairs, and I'll put all the chairs upside down, like straight out of the, um, what was that movie called? Poltergeist? <laughs> Snorlax V says, Streamlabs is back. Yes, it is, but it's strictly for donations. So if you try to buy packs through, through Streamlabs, I will not open any packs for the anything that comes from Streamlabs. Mr. Scooby-Doo and the gang are on the way. I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you meddling kids. Mount all your pans on the ceiling. Oh, my God. Yeah, she'd be scared. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that. You know why? Here's why I'm not gonna do it. Because she actually will get scared. Even if it she knows it's a prank by me. Like if I openly tell her, yeah, I did it, it was a prank, she will still be so scared. Even though she's fully aware it's a prank, she will still be so scared that I'm not gonna get any sexy time. It's just not gonna happen. She's gonna be too frightened. Here it goes. She will just Ooh, what do we get? Oh, there you go. Big hit, Marnie Rainbow, right at the start. Very nice. Perfect timing. And who is this for? Hold on, let me go back. This is for our friend, David Medalia. Rainbow Marnie. You also pick up Full Art Stonk Journer. Stonk! Stonk, stonk, stonk. All right, Stonk Journer. Here, Cinderace. Big hits. That Marnie's very... Uh, desirable. Everyone likes Marnie, apparently. Never play with the Ouija board. All right, I'm getting a Ouija board for her birthday. Her birthday is coming up, by the way, if you guys didn't know that. Uh, Quip's birthday is May 23rd. All right, here's Ndidi. No sexy time, but you're supposed to be practicing to make a baby. <laughs> oh, you also got Reverse Hollow Pikachu. I treat Reverse Hollow Pikachus like a regular hit, because I think they are. I think there's going to be people out there who collect every Pikachu, just like there's people who collect every Charizard. Delmise? Well, this has been a really good round for you so far. Any more hits? We got Rare Candy. Time to make a kid. We got Yamper. I collect every Haunter. What? Here's still a Cobra. And last pack... You also get the hollow Gengar. But you know what? He's off center. We're not going to get too excited for him. He's not going to grade 10. Give her a Ouija board for her birthday. That's right. You guys, I'll, I'll leave an Amazon list of the things she wants. And I'm going to just put Ouija board on there. See, the problem with that is they really do overprint Pikachu. Yeah, he comes out all the time. Regardless, I think people really like him a lot. They like me. They really, really like me. Make a ghost kid. What if I worked really hard? What if I like flipped all the couches upside down uh, and I like, I placed all the pans like somewhere and I teetered all the chairs on top of each other. All the cabinet doors were open and uh, just really crazy stuff all over the place. And then I went to bed and let her figure that out on her own when she walks into the room. God, I want to so bad. I want to scare her. But she's actually, it will affect her. That's the thing. She actually will be so scared that she won't be able to act normal. She won't be able to, like, relax. David Medalia. Mr. Mr. David. All right. Leave an alarm and leave the house early. Oh, my God. Oh, what if I did that, too? Like, what if I left the home 
so that she was all by herself. And I checked into like a simple hotel room and turned my phone off too. Oh my God. She would be so freaking scared. She would not even know. Oh, even better. What if I actually hired an Uber to take me to the hotel so that the car is still home, which would be really unusual. I would never, normally I would never hire an Uber. So if I took the car and left, she would know I, I took the car, it was me and I went somewhere. But if the car was still there and I disappeared, she'd be like, what the? Yeah, she'd be scared out of her mind at that point. I love to think about this kind of stuff. I never do it because she will be terrified by the smallest thing. It would be so cruel. And, and that's perhaps why it's so fun to think about, but I couldn't actually go through with it because she probably would not recover for like weeks. Leave a shoe by the edge of the lake. Oh my God. Well, she probably wouldn't even walk down there. She'd be too concerned. All right, now we have Edward Eaton with three live. I could pack the cats up and take them too. Dude, she'd be scared out of her mind if everyone disappeared and then all the cabinets were open. Well, it would look like there was a robbery. That's what it would look like. It would look like there was a robbery. So even if she didn't believe there was like some ghost spirit, she'd be like, all right, somebody definitely invaded my home. Leon and... Ah! Six General Mills. All right, mister, you're getting some General Mills tonight. Six of them? Damn. That's like two more than four of them. Find a friend on Tinder. You become the scorpion. <laughs> I become the scorpion. Why did you sting me? Because I'm a scorpion. One, two, three, four, five, six. I know what you wanted more than anything else, Mr. Edwin, was three, uh, six packs of General Mills. Not the General Mills. <laughs> All right, here they are. Good luck, mister. <laughs> Two more than four of them. Quick math. All right. Well, so your best pulls out of here will be the holographic Ponita. Cross your fingers and your peepees. Let's see if we can pull it. Open all the doors and drawers and cabinets. Get Got some ETH coming your way, says Benjamin Garcia. General Mills are just reprints of other promos. Benjamin Garcia. Mister, there's a spider on your leg. It's gonna ah! get me. Ah, it's gonna get me. Who's that from? That's from Elon Musk. There's a spider on my leg. There's a snake in my boot. Feet picks, please, or my money back. Long Feet picks. 73. Thanks, Keith. I gotta get these General Mills open. So, you guys wanna see my feet, huh? Look at those pretty toes. They're so nice. All right, you've seen it all. Mister, there's a ghost behind you. I know it. She was trying to scare me the other day. I shouldn't even feel bad. She was hiding behind the couch trying to jump out at me from the couch. I shouldn't feel bad at all. I should scare the crap out of her. Solid Metapod, what? Whoop. Here's Pikachu number two. Okay, are you wearing pants? Um, I'm wearing Pikachu pants. Here's Pikachu. I would pay to touch those feet uh, how much are we talking, mister? Because I need some more pokies. What card was on that floor? Uh, probably Charizard. Pikachu again. That's four Pikachus. No Galarian Ponita. Please put one foot inside the McDonald's bag. Um, <gasps> there it is. Galarian Ponita. Woo! Boats and hoes. Boats and ho-ohs. Who's that from? That's from Elon Muck. We're going for boats and ho-ohs. All right, you've got the General Mills Galarian Ponita. Very nice. That's the card to go after. And one more Pikachu. So you've got six of these Pikachus. And out of those six, hopefully one of them 
is a 10. You also have the Galarian Ponita. You never know what that's going to grade. All right. Very nice. That, that was basically the ideal outcome for Mr. Edward, right? Let's see. Edward Eaton. And Edward Eaton, where did we put your bag? Did we put it up top? Here it is. Edward Eaton. Mr. Edward and Mr. Earth Savior have quite a lot of cards. I'm going to go ahead and put you in the overflow now. Mr. Edward Eaton, you're in the overflow. Now, did I see that? Give me a second. I'm not sure if I saw that order come in for Mr. Benjamin, but I thought it did and I missed it. Hold on. Mr. Ponita. I know. All right. No, that order has not come in. So let's continue on the list. We have Ramiro Andrade, who says, two McDonald's, one live custom, I need a bag. Oh, Mr. Ramiro, you just missed the Ponita. There might be another one, though. You never know. Ramiro, he also wants a live custom, but you know, he just pulled a hot one out. So you're getting Bravaria Mewtwo. Okay, Bravaria Mewtwo. You're not hunting for the Pikachu. You're hunting for the Galarian Ponita. Well, there's also Wooloo, and there's more Peko, and there's, what, Florges, I believe. Florges, Yampers in there, and then also Galarian Ponita. But I believe the Galarian Ponita is probably the best one because the Galarian Ponita, besides looking pretty good, it was limited to only the uh, certain cereal boxes, if I recall. There was something like it was only in the Cinnamon Toast Crunch boxes or something like that. Ooh, double. Did you say McDonald's? Two McDonald's. Well, these Pikachus are for me. Ha, ha, ha. All the Pikachus for me. Sorry, guys. No Pikachus for you. I don't know why I thought that it was General Mills he had ordered. I'm just having a brain fart there. Now, we had a, a, okay, right. We had a McDonald's pack right here. And... Here's another one. That must have been from the previous box, and I must have forgot it was there. I come back, Mister's making mistakes. No, no mistakes. Here it goes. Mr. Ramiro. Sneep. I think I have to update the... Uh, I think I need to update this, too. I forgot about that. So this is going to say 76... Kyogre Kings asked, can I have that Snorlax, please? It was in my pack. Can he have what? You mean like a bulk? Was it a bulk Snorlax? Is that what's going on? Oh, here we go. And that's for who? David Medalio? I'm trying to think. Why would he be asking for that? Probably because it was a non-hollow Snorlax. All right, there you go, Mr. David. All right, here we go. This is for Ramiro. Pack number one is Oshawott. All right. And pack, no, pack number two is... Whoop. Cyndaquil. All right, Cyndaquil. I like the Cyndaquil. I think the Cyndaquil is one of the better ones. That Minecraft music just never gives up. I can't watch something I can't see. So this goes over to Mr. Ramiro with an R. Give me a second, Ramiro. Ryan Hutch, Rob Ryan, Robin, Ronald, Raul, Raul, Ricky, Ryan, Ricardo. I don't think he's in here. He says I need a bag. My bad. New bag. Welcome back, Mr. Ramiro. New bag. You guys like the uh, Streamlabs being back, being able to get that little lady to talk? The robot lady? There we go. I think that's fun. It used to be real popular back before... Uh, before I stopped having it on. Keith Craver says, two shining fates. Two shining fates. Shining fates. 
Oh, right, that's, that's the English one. People order the Japanese one so much, I couldn't figure out which one we're talking about. Here it is, Shining Fates. One Pikachu VMAX. I think you're talking about the, the custom metal card, right? And one Charizard VMAX gold card. Okay, give me a minute. I'll be right back. I gotta go retrieve it. The custom metal cards. So squeaky. Here they are. Now see that? That's just the plastic sticking to them. There it goes, see? <laughs> Beautiful. Oop, 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 oop. You ready? Ooh. But you just bullied me. Stop bullying! New evidence shows COVID-19 came from a lab. What? Tell us more. I mean, you got to think it's way too convenient that the Wuhan lab where they're studying COVID was the location of the outbreak. They're like, yeah, some guy was eating bat soup and that's what started it all. That sounds like a cover up. It was the bat soup. The bat soup did it. Oh, really? It wasn't the COVID lab located directly next to the wet market? Because that seems like what, it, you know, it, it's way too convenient. I think there were two labs. I think there were two labs they had out there, right? Someone correct me. They had two research labs going just for viruses in that very area. It's, it's like, <laughs> it's like if you're a little kid, you know, and your mom catches porn on the computer and you were the last one to use it. And you're like, no, mom, that was a freak accident of nature. I didn't do that. And it's like, oh, okay, sure. <laughs> it seems too convenient, you know what I mean? It, it kills me. Keith Craver, and we'll never know. The Chinese are never gonna admit to it. They're never gonna say, oh, you got us. Yeah, it came out of our lab. You know, they're not gonna let us research it. And what even, if we investigate it, what even is there to investigate? If we did investigate it, what is there to investigate? Is there going to be some camera of the virus getting out? There's not going to be some recording of it getting out or some, you know, evil doctor with a pocket full of virus going, hey, 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 twisting their handlebar mustache and pouring the virus into the uh, bat soup or something like that. None of that is recorded at all. So they're just going to deny it. But I mean, come on. It's right there. <laughs> Fauci funded it. The damage is done. Next up, we got Raphael. Raphael says, let's stay frosty. One fates collide and one lost thunder. Ooh, fates collide. I'm a big fan. Don't make me have to pull out my one-eyed Washington. <laughs> so there's fates. And he said another lost thunder? Yeah, one lost thunder. The Who is investigating. All right, here we are. See this lab located directly next to the location of the COVID outbreak? Yeah, they were researching COVID. Oh, okay. But also, uh, it was probably this guy over here eating bat soup that caused it. I, like, I just don't believe it. Oh, mister, you pull another Altaria. Oh my gosh. Double Altarias. How can you not feel how convenient it would be. And, and I've mentioned this before, by the way, for anyone who's new, look this up, it's true. Did you, know, did you know China was stockpiling gold right before the coronavirus came out? And the coronavirus came out conveniently during an election season in the United States versus a president who's very hard on China with all the tariffs and everything, right? So they're buying up gold the year before it comes out and it gets released during an election cycle. It's all so convenient. And it gets released in an area right next to the Wuhan COVID lab. Ah, ah, the conspiracy's too much. <laughs> I'm blowing up. <laughs> okay, so Raphael, let's grab your bag. <laughs> Here we go. Full art, all Terrier, very nice. 
do show my bag for potential trade, please. Oh, uh, I can do that. Okay. So we're showing off Mr. Raphael's bag for potential trade. You ready? Altaria. Oh, right. You don't like your hollows. Let me place those to the side. Altaria, Lugia, Hollow Dragonite, Gumshoes, Squovit, Slowpoke, Psyduck, Crobat, Dragonite again, Decidueye, Hollow Mew, Shining Volcanion, Delmise, some Nice looking hollows, Pikachu Golurk, Genesec, Mag Cargo, uh, Hollow Suicune, but he's a little off center. Zygarde, Lugia, Sigilyph, Espeon, Jirachi, Lugia, Crobat, Mime, Dragonite, Psyduck, Espeon, Taurus, Espeon, Lapras, Hitmonchan, Dragonite, Genesect, Regirock. These were what? Delphox, Delphox Break, Tauros, Lunala, Mew, Snorlax from Evo, and Umbreon. Okay, there you go. Yo, what do you want for the Slowpoke Psyduck? Yeah, so be careful on that trade with the Slowpoke Psyduck because I, I graded him high. He, he could have potential for a 10, okay? And I'll put this bag over here. And now, Mr. Alexio says, Hey, yo, one live pack, please. I have a bag. Mr. One live pack for our friend Alexio. He gets cottony. It's cottony. Sorry, Alexio, nothing too wild. Alexio, did you have a bag? Alexio Alvarez. He says, I do have a bag. Wow, that's a morbidly obese bag. I know, it's a really big bag. He's been going deep for a while. Very, very nice of him. Population balance. A population can't live without balance. Is with nature. You can have good without bad. What? <laughs> what are we talking about? Is that like some... Uh, Avengers, uh, who was the bad guy in Avengers? I don't even remember. Ah, <laughs> uh, everything in balance or something like that. I don't remember. I'm trying to remember his name. I was never that much, Thanos, thank you. I was never that much into it, the Marvel stuff. <laughs> he was all into balance and all that. Next up, we got Tammy Lowe. Whoa, Tammy's got an order. She says... Let's have some interesting times. Two Cosmic. Oh, Cosmic Equips. Okay, we got two Cosmic right here. One Shining Legends. Oh, my God. We're opening Shining Legends. Four Live Customs. I need a new bag. Oh, my gosh. Four Live Customs for Tammy. That's Ferrothorn. What do we have here? Tops! One, two, three, and four. Fungus! Okay. So we'll toss this in the trash. And we'll grab you your tops pack. So now we've got the tops pack. Tammy, you didn't tell me you were going to get tops. Let's start with the tops pack. Tops, tops, tops. Sneep. Perfectly balanced. Oh, that's the quote. Here we go. Ooh, look at that Arcanine right in the front. We got Caterpie back here. Caterpie comes right off. These cards must have been sticky somehow. <laughs> Warm up the cards. Yeah, let's pop it in the microwave. All right, here's Arcanine. Whoop, don't want to drop it. Arcanine, pack fresh Arcanine. There we go. Here's Golbat. Golbat and Meowth. This is Tops Series 1. Had some muck in between the cards, that's right. <laughs> Okay, three cards left. You know, I see, is that a fire type? Here's a Metazoo. All right, we got Metazoo. And now uh, this will be the hollow card. Oh, there's three cards left still. So we got Need Arena and Geodude. Okay, the hollow card is probably gonna be that Kadabra. And we're gonna see if he can come unstuck without being torn apart, which would be very nice. 
It's a Neat Arena and Kadabra, but we can see the Neat Arena card's not hollow. It immediately feels more stuck than the other cards, uh, but not as much at the top here. Yeah. What a pity. Why are these all stuck so bad? I hate to say it, Tammy, but... Yeah, you can see it's already struggling. Let's get it pulled apart. No! Kadabra, we wanted you to be nice and full. Look at this. Actually, you know, when you zoom in, there's like bubbles there almost. You notice that? The surface got like bubbly. What do you think caused that? All right, there's Kadabra, and here's Need Arena. Yeah, that's really tough. Let's go ahead and open up your Shining Legends. You got all the other ones, but eh, that Kadabra would have been really nice. Wax cards. Wax on, wax off. He says, why did you open it? Um, Because she pulled it out of the live customs. Verizian and Sophocles. That is not a hot pack. How about the Cosmic? Are all top cards like this? No, I wouldn't say so, but it shows you how difficult it can be to pull a perfect 10 on the hollows if you consider that the hollows could be stuck like that for many packs. Oh, what do we have here? Or a choreo. All right, or a choreo. That's just an okay pull. And. Do Piter. Do Piter. So I would say that those pulls were just all right. The Shining Legends were definitely cold, and the Cosmic did have an Oracorio GX. But you know, I'm so sad about the Kadabra. Let's go ahead and do a pity pull, huh? Just for Tammy. Tammy goes deep a lot, and I want to show some appreciation. Here's a shiny Poiple to make the pulls a little bit better. All right. And you're going to need a brand new bag. Yeah, the Nidorino and the Kadabra are spoiled. But you've got Geodude, Metapod, Meowth, Golbat, this lovely Arcanine, and Caterpie. So you do have a number of them that actually came out fine. Cross-dressed toes? What? All right, Tammy. There we go. Tammy with the tea. I'll place you up in the tea box. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and refresh. Mister, are the tops packs for sale or was it a one-off? Uh, technically, I have more tops packs, but I would kind of like to reserve them for the live custom boosters. Uh, for example, I have a few more of these. These are the top series two, two packs. But I was thinking of putting them all into the custom boosters. Take a look at that. $1.99. <laughs> Back in the day, this would have cost you two bucks, guys. Two dollars. And that's it. Man, times have changed. All right, and we're logging back in. Mister, you think Katy Perry's song about Pokemon releasing this Friday going to spark some new interest? What? Is that true? Katy Perry's releasing a Pokemon song? Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Tell me that's not true. That's too much, mister. Okay, we're refreshing. We just helped Tammy. Here it is, Tammy. Now we have an order, a large order, from Edwin Acosta. He says he wants a spot in the large and three lives. Mr. Edwin. I kissed a girl and I liked it. I kissed a jinx and I liked it. Edwin Acosta. There you go. Post Malone already did one too. Oh my God. <laughs> Unfortunately, that look against damaged product. At Warp Tour, did Post Malone, lol, hell no, he was a big meme. Yeah, I mean, the Tops card, it's just the nature of opening up really old booster packs. We did pull a vintage, or we did pull uh, a pity pull for Tammy, though, out of the box, and she did end up with Poiple. 
Mr. Edwin also wants three live customs. Here goes. Oshawott. Green dice. No, greedy dice. And up. PSA 8, number 122. Let's see what that is. Post was so cringe, says Pokey Day. Mr. Mime, PSA 8 from Jungle. Very nice. This goes to Edwin Acosta. Edwin. Now you just need to pull the large on that single card, and you'll be set. Here it is. Edwin goes, snipe. That's right. That was a snipe. We'll go ahead and sleeve this up. Now, did he have a bag? Last Friday night, going to buy out Mr. Stock so no one can purchase. What? Oops. Manuel, Eric, Estuardo, Emmanuel, Eric, Guzman, Evan, Emily, Ever, Edward Acosta. Here it is. Mr. Evan. I don't have many cards. What if I bought some packs for you that hollow Snorlax? What? I have a bag. You do. Here it is. We'll toss these hollows in with it. Next up, we have Jack Gray. Jack says, I'll try Detective Pikachu. Also, one life custom, one darkness, and one battle styles. Okay, we got a battle styles. We got a darkness. We got a Pikachu pack. Detective Pikachu. He also said one live, right? All right, good luck on your live pack. I haven't been around here long, but what are your thoughts on scalpers? What are my thoughts on scalpers? So scalping occurs when a product is real popular so that people who are actually going to use that product uh, can sometimes struggle to find it and they start paying more for it in order to obtain it. And then the scalpers hear about that and they go, oh, so there's some money to be made of flipping some, uh, uh, let's say, limited item. Uh, and this could include like tickets to go sh see a show. And so what they do is they artificially buy it all up only with the intent to uh, resell it later. And this drives the price up really bad. And I would say in, this, in the past, scalping wasn't as big of an issue, but I would say it's gotten worse because of the ability to use like robots to buy the goods and maybe social media has played a role as well. Uh, I think basically there should be some way to outlaw it, basically. That's what I think. I don't think that people getting angry is going to do anything about it. The alternative is to have the companies printing or, or offering these services that are naturally uh, sort of rare or naturally sort of limited. They could just offer a whole lot more. So like Pokemon can way over print, but that would kind of change the it would change whether or not the item is as collectible. So if they were to print like an endless amount of a set like Hidden Fates, it won't be as collectible anymore. That's just how we'll end up. So it's kind of unfortunate that it turns out that way. And there's no way to stop them unless it were to be maybe outlawed or something like that. And so that's, that's the reality of where it is. Uh, you could contact your local governor and tell them you want to outlaw scalping for collectibles. And we'll see what happens. But yeah, that's what I would say. That's that's where I'd take it. And you got to remember, sometimes the scalpers include uh, just also collectors, you know, because as a collector, you and I are very consciously aware of when we're going to make money on a flip, right? So if you got PSA cards of, if you can open up a box of Pokemon cards, grade all the cards inside and literally turn a profit, it's not just going to be scalpers who have never collected Pokemon cards who are scalping. It's going to be the actual collectors who are very aware of prices. Uh, they're going to do some of the scalping too. So it's not just people coming from out of the blue. Plenty of collectors are probably doing it as well. So it's part of, part of collecting is that you try to maybe make a little money in your own hobby. 
You got Machamp, Mr. Machamp, Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Psyduck. You know what I mean? So if you're going to, if you, let's say you want to own a nice Charizard and you can open up a box of your favorite Pokemon cards with the chance to buy the, uh, with the chance to pull that Charizard that you want. But let's say you don't pull them. You can then sell off all the other cards and try again, right? So some of the scalping naturally occurs in a hobby where you have limited numbers of uh, desirable collectibles. It's just going to happen. Uh, but if you're talking about, you know, like 50-year-old guys who their whole their whole job is hitting up every Target, hitting up every Walmart, because those guys exist. Back when I worked for Target, there were these old men and they would go over to uh, the card aisle and they would go over to the toy aisle every morning. This was when I was 18 years old and I worked for Target. And these guys would stand at the doors at Target. And nobody talked about it back then because it wasn't as big of a deal. But they would stand at the door waiting for the doors to open and then they'd run inside. They were always real out of shape, although that's not you know, that's mean of me to say that everyone gets out of shape as they get older, but not everyone, but lots of people do. But, you know, they were like 50 years old and they're huffing and puffing, running off to the aisles to collect like the rare Hot Wheels. And I don't I don't even know what they did in the car dolls, but I guess they did uh, some scalping in the car dolls. Well, you know, you got people who have no interest in the collecting and they really they just want to make money off of it. And it shows that there is an economy. There is an economy for these cards. Um, and the economy was basically expanding. The demand for these cards were expanding, and the scalpers showed up to take advantage of that. But again, some of the some of the scalpers are just going to be the collectors. And uh, the other thing is, sometimes a lot of the anger over the scalping, and this is what I feel. You guys can disagree. I feel like some of the anger over the scalping is other scalpers wishing they could have scalped. So it's other people going, that should be my Charizard. So I could sell them for $600. So there's a lot of like anger out of the limited amount of product out there. But I think there's plenty of other people who are just like, I should have made that money. And they get frustrated that someone beat them to it. So sometimes the people who get most angry about the scalpers would have done the scalping themselves. <laughs> they would have done it themselves, but some tryhard beat them to it. You know what I mean? All right, so that was for Jack Gray. How could they beat me to it? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a topic of interest. And again, there's actually laws in New York about how you can buy tickets for going to a show. And in New York, they made it illegal to scalp, meaning you can't buy tickets with the intent to resell tickets. And you could request laws like that for Pokemon cards. Maybe they'll get passed. I don't know. Um, of course, what will probably happen is the grading companies will raise their prices dramatically. We're already seeing that. One day, it will cost so much money to grade cards at a place like PSA that it will no longer be profitable to grade them. And this will immediately cut down on demand for the cards because now you can't flip a booster box. And then the other thing is, the supply of cards will dramatically increase too. So Pokemon TCG will eventually print so many cards that there'll just be too much supply for uh, the scalpers to turn a profit anymore. So between PSA, CGC, and Pokemon card company, eventually you will see the prices go back down. And if they never go back down, then somebody is missing out on their profits. Either the grading companies are, or Pokemon is, or both of them. So that's what you'll eventually see. That's my prediction. That was my prediction a while ago, by the way. I've been saying that the whole time, and I still believe it. Next up, we've got Anthony Roberts. Anthony says, hey, Mr. One Large Custom. You got it. Here we go. Long-term holders are okay, but people instantly buy out and selling products for double or triple the price. I definitely graded expensive cards I don't want, trying to turn my collection bigger and bigger. Well, and that's part of the fun of collecting. People have to understand that. So you can get mad all day at the so-called scalpers, but in the end, a big part of the hobby is buying and selling cards. You sell the ones you don't want and you buy the ones you do. The problem happens when you got people who have no interest in Pokemon. They think Pokemon's just stupid cardboard. They don't actually like Pokemon. And they're quite literally just here for the financial uh, purpose. And they don't 
They don't collect. They don't go, oh, I want to hold a bunch of these. They don't have favorite cards. Maybe they never had any nostalgia for the cards, you know? Maybe none of that exists for them. And for them, it's just a system for them to make money. So there's, there's people who wake up in the morning and they have a list of items to scalp. It's not just Pokemon cards. They have a whole list. Pokemon, whatever, sport cards, Yu-Gi-Oh cards. They got kids' toys to scalp. They got electronics to scalp. And what they do is they wake up and they rush off to the stores to buy up all those items in order to keep them scarce. That includes like the, the video game consoles like Xbox and PlayStation. And so there's like professional scalpers. All they're doing is waking up and buying out everything that they know is scarce and then reselling it on like eBay or Amazon or whatever. So that's the bigger problem. That's like a professional scalper. And they sort of wreck havoc, in my opinion, on something that's supposed to be enjoyable for the consumer, but they're not a true consumer. They're just creating an artificial scar scarcity, unfortunately. Okay, Mr. Anthony, we've got you in the large. And next up, we've got Connor Gillespie, who wants one last battle style. Oh, mister, one last battle style. Give me a moment. Oops, here we are. He says, make it a snipe. You got it. People are scalping canning jar lids. Really? <laughs> it's a job, mister. I have 8K in credit card debt to pay off, so I need a big hit in the next <laughs> box break. You're too funny. Speaking of which, didn't you, uh, you're, oh, there you go, Necrozma V. Necrozma V Full Art from Mr. Connor Gillespie. That was the last pack in the box, and it was a full art. Connor, or not Connor, um, Brad, didn't you have that uh, rocket site there? You know if that grades 10, you should make me an offer, because I'll be open-minded to it. Connor Gillespie. There's two scythers for sale on the Ebays right now, and I could buy them. However, I'm just kind of a... a avoiding them because I'd rather have one that we opened and recorded opening but if it doesn't come back 10 I don't I, I could still make an offer on it but I wouldn't be as excited unfortunately I'm, I'm hoping to have a 10. That is one of the cards I'd like to have. Mike Spano says five McDonald's packs I accidentally sent a request the first time. What? Okay five of these guys. One, two, three, four, five. Pokemons. Pokies. We're having a mass gas shortage. That's right, because of that, the uh, hackers, I guess. What did the hackers want to do? Just mess up the supply chain? Or were they going to be like, pay us this money or we're going to keep it hacked? Three. Four. And five. There we go. Best example, I don't care for Rainbow Nessa, but I spent 50 to greater and sold her for 500. I need that Rainbow Lugia. Well, yeah, I mean, and the funny thing is, if you can open up a box of Vivid Voltage and instantly turn a profit on it through grading, that's a problem. You shouldn't turn a profit. You have to break even because if you were turning a profit, well, then people should be buying it up all day. And what will eventually happen is the price of the box should go so high that it no longer turns a profit. You see what I'm saying? Because people do this for fun. This isn't even hard work. This is for fun. So when it's turning a profit to have fun, uh, everyone's going to do it and the price is going to go up. So, And that's another, thing, uh, that's another thing we should talk about when it comes to scalping. Part of the reason that people are scalping it's not just evil people looking to ruin your day. The actual demand for the cards is higher, guys, you know? So when, you're, when your Walmart or your Target is sold out, part of the reason why it's sold out is because if the scalpers don't buy it, some other guy will. And it might have been the case that the people who are just opening the Pokemon cards really did get to the shelf first. Maybe nobody scalped your local Walmart. Maybe it was just people who wanted to open Pokemon cards. I mean, how many times have you guys finally found some product on the shelves and then you immediately took it home and sold it on eBay. I'm willing to bet many of you actually kept it and opened it. So you have to remember the demand for Pokemon cards is sky high right now and it could just be people opening them to open them. You see what I'm saying? Uh, but that's not always the case. You got like the McDonald's packs are a perfect example. When these came out, there were people who were definitely running out to buy them and get them listed up on eBay and stuff like that. 
uh, especially because you're not going to be able to go to your local card shop and buy these packs like normal. Uh, this made them more, let's say they were probably more profitable as a scalped item than something your local card store could provide. I've met my scalpers at the local stores, mister. They don't care. I need more McDonald's hollows, mister. Mister, I love McDonald's hollows. Here's Cyndaquil. And one more pack. Fennekin. All right, Fennekin. Oops. I'm never buying off scalpers or card shops, only MSRP in 2030. <laughs> what? That's for Mr. Mike Spanos. He, does he need a bag? Mr. Mike, let's see if he's already got a bag. I, I just like opening them for the what am I going to get excitement. Not super interesting grading, but might get into it sometime soon. Well, there's a ton of money being made in grading. The premium people pay for a, a graded 10 is so high. And, and, and probably that's because, especially with English cards, it's so hard to get an actual 10. You know what I mean? Like many cards are off center or they have a print line or a white dot. It Even with brand new cards that just came out of the pack, you're not going to get a 10. Maybe like half the side. Oh, you said no bag? Okay, let's create a bag. Thank you, Mr. Mike. Mike Spanos. Mr. Mike. There we go. It's so hard to get a 10, and that's why the, the encapsulation companies are doing so well is because they tell you when the card is a 10, but they also protect the card. So I spent a bunch of money obtaining this. And if this was a raw card, it wouldn't be worth very much at all. But this is a 20-year-old card, and I know that it's pristine, and it's encapsulated too, so it can't be hurt. So I can pick it up and hold it and not worry about hurting it. So the grading companies are also part of the reason why the demand for Pokemon cards have skyrocketed is because people basically figured out, oh my gosh, I can grade my Pokemon cards. I want to grade them. You know what I mean? Okay. Adam Vinson is next. Adam Vinson says, one unified minds, my last attempt at some pokey pulls. Mr. Adam, let's get you one unified minds. Here goes. Maybe it'd be like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. This will be the hot pull. You pull is Dratini. All right, mister, you get one Dratini. Sorry that it wasn't Mewtwo and Mew. <laughs> Everyone has the same idea. Do you think sealed McDonald's packs will have a lot of value in the future? Yeah, sure. You know, if you want to take a few of them and grade them, the, the actual booster packs, I don't see anything wrong with that. And, you know, actually, I've thought about taking a, a case of McDonald's packs, using that flashlight method to find the best ones, and then taking the least popular ones and sending those to grade, or even selling them as light packs, you know what I mean? Only sealed McDonald's cases will go up in value. Well, I would say also that the graded booster packs will go up in value too, right? So for people who just want to have the actual booster pack. All right. Edwin says, how's the line looking? Uh, I don't think it's too bad. I'm refreshing right now, actually. What time is it? Is 162? I don't think it's too bad. I think it'll be pretty short. We can test when Mai comes back from grading. That's true. Big demand for pokey graded packs. I love the graded packs, actually. All right, so let's see. We were opening for... For Adam Vinson. Now we have Ryan Hutch with the large order. He says, how's it going? Five lost thunder. Wow. Okay. You got it, Mr. Ryan. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, just five. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Five lost thunders. One out of 62. What are you talking about? Here goes. Sneep. One, two, three, four, and five. Oh, what kind of time is that? 162 minutes. 162 minutes, which means we're approaching three hours. We've got, ooh, the D Ditto Prism Star. Very nice. 
Now, I think that the Ditto Prism Star is actually gradable. I think somebody would like to hold that and be like, here he is. Here's Houndoom and Shaman. Blitzel? Oh, mister. Oh, here we go. Mina, full art Mina. Congratulations to Ryan Hutch on pulling full art Mina. You got the waifu, mister. She's more of an artist type. <laughs> and Lampant. Very good. Mister, that was a hot round for you. Ryan Hutch. Can you do a video on how to grade packs? You go, do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. And then the packs are graded. Very easy, huh? Ryan Hutch. Let's see. Does he have a bag? Ryan. Ryan Hutch. Yes, he does. I want it. <laughs> and we'll toss this in here. Next up, we've got... Jack Walsh. Jack says, hey, Mr. Five Darkness. Five Darkness. Can you make a video on how I should grade my class's test? One, two, three, four, five. You're what? I just ordered three Shining Fates. Oh, okay. All right, here it goes. Oh, Shining Legends. Really? Oh, my God, dude. Snape. Freaking Shining Legends, man. You only tell us how to grade cards when it benefits you. <laughs> well, I, to be fair, I haven't made a lot of videos at all on this channel. I just, I, I pour all my time into the live stream. Here we go. We've got Grimmel Snarl V. Okay, that's it. That's all you needed was Grimmel Snarl. Not a single card more. There's Toxtricity. Here's Vanillish. Mr. doesn't want my ETH. I do want your ETH, I promise. Has it arrived? I don't think it arrived. Here's Pulte Geist. And, oh, Salamans V. Very nice. Oops, come on now. There we go. Grimmel Snarl and Salamans V. That was a nice round. I don't think it arrived. An earlier order arrived of Ethereum from... Escalamine, but I don't think this Ethereum for Mew arrived. Let me check, because it should show up in my email. I'll go ahead and refresh it. What's my random fact of the day? Um, are lunchtime streams coming back? Good question. I could try to bring them back. Yeah, so according to this, I've not received any Ethereum from you. Let's see. Who is this for? It was for our friend Jack Walsh. Jack Walsh, are you in the overflow? Mr. Only Accept ETH when it benefits him. Man, that's become a big meme on this channel. <laughs> Guy was so mad. Five Team Rocket Returns packs, I wish. Oh, that would be a dream come true. Jared, Jeremy, Jet, Jacob, Jansen, Jason, James. I feel like Jack Walsh maybe is in the overflow already, but I'm not sure. Jedediah, James O'Brien, J. Manuel. I would put J. Manuel in the uh, lost and found soon because he is his bag's been there for a long time and it's taken up a lot of room. So Jack Walsh must be over here, right? Fergie Cave, Jeffrey... Evan, Joey Joseph, Kokoshke, Edward, Jacob Kai, Alan something, bleh. Emiliano. What else do we have here? We've got, who's this? Joe Harris. Wow, that's a huge bag. Here's Jeremy Helmstadter, Jack Gray. Jack Walsh, found you. You were in the overflow. I had a hunch. All I had to do was look at every single bag in the overflow. 
<laughs> okay, let's see what we got. We're going to do a refresh. We're coming closer to the end. You rarely see Team Rocket Returns. Well, that's because as part of the the um, the set that came right out uh, came out right after Sky Ridge, and none of those booster boxes were printed very much. They were, they were very low print runs. Maybe it's because Pokemon cards were not as popular at that point. Big order from Daniel Coronado. He says three Shining Legends. Oh no! So I got one pack here for you. And I need to go crack open a power collection box. I'll be right back. This will take me a minute. I can't believe how rare these are becoming. Here I am. Okay. So this is for Daniel Coronado. Good luck, man. That's a lot of pokies on the table. You ready? Felt like a card was pushed forward in that pack. Just make sure none of these have cards pushed forward. Cool. Mr. Daniel, these could all be cold. Which is why I stopped offering them, by the way, is because I thought that they were too high risk. We got Venusaur Kelio. Pack number two. Water Energy Raikou. Oh, man. Come on, come on, ho oh, there you go. What do we got? Mister also pulling a hyper rare Zorark. That's crazy, I feel like we just pulled one of these. What are the odds that we would pull two like that? Woo, all right, Daniel, it was not all a waste. You pick up hyper rare or a Zorark. Sweet. We'll go ahead and sleeve these up. Mister. Oops, Zorubwa. Daniel Coronado. He's got the <laughs> the Pepe Zard. Where did I see your bag last? Was it up top? I'm trying to remember. Uh, you keep all the Shining Legend hollow, yeah. Finnegan, Drake Brown. Daniel. Derek Withrow. Diego, Dylan, Darwin, Dominic. Do you need a new bag? Need a new bag. All right, new bag. Who dis? Woo! There we go. Sweet! Well, I'm glad it wasn't just three three hollows, because that would be totally normal for that to have been three hollows. It happens all the time. Looks like we have another order in. And it's from Mr. Raphael. He says, hey, Mr. Back at it again. I made a trade with Benjamin Garcia. His Solgalia for the Mew and Dragonite in my bag. This is a tier one CGC submission. Let's send that Lugie. Hold on. So his Soul Galio, Mr. Benjamin Garcia. Here it is. For a Mew and a Soul Galio. Okay. 
Mr. Nugent said he made an order one and a half hours ago. Did you miss him? Mr. Nugent, do you mind telling me what your PayPal name is? And I'll go looking for it, okay? It is possible you got missed. So here's a Dragonite. And here is a Mew. Ramiro. Ramiro Andrade, you didn't get... Uh, we did get an order for a Ramiro Andrade. Um, you didn't get skipped, if that's the case. Where do we put your pull, though? I'm trying to find it. Ramiro Andrade. We definitely pulled him. Remember that? Let me toss this back in here. I think you asked me to grade the Lugia. Mister, one time I waited four hours. Here's the Lugia. I'm trying to remember what he pulled. Did we have to create a new bag for him? Is that what we had to do? Now this goes into Benjamin Garcia's bag. And Mr. requested a grading as well. He says, no, that wasn't me. I ordered two McDonald's. Okay. And alive. Yeah, I think I remember that order, though. Remember, what happened was I, I think I opened up two General Mills, and then I opened up two McDonald's and alive. There's more, mister. Finish the message. Oh. Oh, I see. You want to send even more. You're right. I'm sorry. I was a little distracted. So let's get the Solgaleo and the Altaria. Wow, you're going to have a lot of cards come back. Here we go. Very nice. He says, thanks, Raphael, and thanks, mister. No problem. I really don't know how his vintage store is going to work. I feel he's going to charge a ridiculous amount of money to go to it since supposedly the packs are only going to be $3.99. Yeah, well, I'm sure that he will find a way to uh, make that make sense financially. You have to, basically. All right, here we go, Mr. Raphael. $30 vintage packs. Can't imagine how well those would be popular. <laughs> okay. So he took care of that for Raphael. And now let's roll on back to Mr. Ramiro. Ramiro Andrade. Two McDonald's, one live custom. I need a bag. Yeah, we definitely opened that. Where did, where did his bag though, go, though? Should actually just be right here. Here it is, Ramiro Andrade. See, we open it up. You pulled uh, Breveria Mewtwo out of your live, and then you pulled Oshawa and Cyndaquil. Okay, there you go, Mr. Nugen. All the confusion has cleared up. Visitation is by lottery. Oh, if it's by lottery, then the lottery is based on... The lottery is what's going to pay for the booster packs, probably, if I had to guess. Okay, after that, let's go ahead and refresh one more time. I think we do have another order. Also, I never did receive, so Mr. Benjamin Garcia, I never did receive uh, any kind of ETH. I hope you didn't missend it or anything. I'm going to go ahead and toss that. We'll put this back here. Maybe you changed your mind. Or maybe it's just taking a long time. So, we have Emiliano. He says, one unified minds and a pre-grade. Sounds good. Let's see. One unified minds for Emiliano. I sent 0 .0216 ETH. I'll double check the address, says Benjamin Garcia. Yeah, but it, it hasn't showed up in my email at all. So, it always shows up in my email. Yeah, the one from earlier today showed up. Let me refresh again. I can't remember if he said you had to pay to enter the lottery. Oh, I see. Well, it could just be a generous giveaway that he's he's handing out to people. Maybe he counts it as a business expense. Oh, what do we get? Nice. Heatran. All right. Heatran. Boop. Tammy, buy a first edition booster box. <laughs> 
Uh, there we go. So here we are. Add rev from the videos too, I bet. So we've got Heatran who is looking really well centered on the front and the back. All right, so your Heatran might be a 10. Here's a well-centered Eternatus. Team up Mewtwo. He's pretty close. He might be a 10. I bought he I thought he said you had to donate to get it for some charity. You'd have to donate at least a dollar or something along the lines of that. Hello, Mr. Happy Wednesday. What's up, Ponzo Live? How's it going, Ponzo? Ditto. Malamar. Oh man, such a clean card. Here's Weavile. Weavile's real off center down here. Um <laughs> Would I send it off? Maybe. You could send it off as a joke. That's not going to be a 10, though. So you got some hollows. Mr. and Rev. Decidueye. He's thin on the right. Yeah, thin on the right for sure. He might have a shot at PSA, but I suspect he'll be 9. Naganadel. He says, oh my gosh, I sent it to another one of my wallets. Oh, there you go. <laughs> the mystery has been solved. Okay, there's Naganadel. Metagross. Looking a little thin on the bottom, maybe. Man, he's pretty clean. I'd send him out. Vicavolt. Thin on the left, or the right, I mean. Raikou. Thin on the left. Yes, definitely thin on the left. Gardevoir. Not bad. Definitely send the Gardevoir out. Slightly off-center, but really not that much. Same deal with the Magirna. And the Steelix. Wow, you're doing really well right now. I don't know how you get so lucky. You just get lucky. I would say this is slightly off-center. Too much for comfort. Same with this one. They're just break cards, so I don't know if I'd take that risk on those. This one's a bit closer, though. I would try the Xerneas. Come on. Yeah, I mean, it's it's thin on this corner, you can tell, and then thicker on this corner. I would still try that, the Pokemon Ranger. Colossal, he's thinner down here on this corner. He's too off-center. He's probably a nine. Coach Trainer is off-center. Uh, oh, I don't know anything about how these cards grade, but you can see that the corners are still very pointy. Uh, so there you have... Uh, what do they call that? Uh, Jersey? There we go. Jersey card. You also have this Gerald Martin. I don't know anything about those, so those are up to you to grade. And this is tilted. I, well, he could have a shot at like PSA. I don't. I wouldn't send that off to CGC. CGC will say no on that card right away. Grapple locked. Uh, it's kind of the same deal. He's like tilted, but actually he's not that bad. You're still, you're, you're right now, you're doing pretty well, Emiliano. Yep, he's well-centered. Uh, yep. Fat on the bottom for sure. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And down to the hollows. Okay, so now I don't even know if these, these basketball cards are considered nines or tens. We'll put them in the tens pile for now. Your, your tens pile is nice and big, but what's sad is you got a lot of nice cards over here in the nine pile. Uh, would I grade them? A uh, number of them, I probably would. And then over here in the tens pile, you actually do have lots and lots of nice cards. Let me put these in front of that. So Pokemon Ranger is a big one. Xerneas. Gardevoir is a big one. Yeah, actually, you know what? You had a lot of your full art show up in that nines pile. That is that is a little tough. But you do have a decently sized tens, ten pile as well. Mr. Emiliano... I'll put that in the overflow box now. There you go. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and refresh. Did Mr. Benjamin Garcia still want to open something with that ETH? I know you're thinking about it. He says, I sent it to my other wallet. That's scary, man. You sent it to somebody else's wallet by accident. So... 
Oh, we do have more orders. Uh, we have an order from Mr. James O'Brien. He says three Yu-Gi-Oh! Maximum Cardboard. All right, Maximum Cardboard. Probably a more appropriate name for it than Maximum Gold, right? <laughs> the wallet you posted has no activity, mister. What does that mean? Here we are. Okay, Mr. James. Sleep. Yeah, luckily it was one of mine. Sleep. There we go. You can see it on ETH scan. No transactions in or out ever. You can check the logs, he means. See, I don't know any of this stuff. I don't know how to check the logs. Well, I, I don't think that can be accurate because people have been sending me... Uh, they've been sending me ETH... Look at that, super polymerization. They've been sending me Bitcoin and ETH the whole time. I think he's only used uh, BTC. No, that's not true. It's like what I've just said, uh, people have actually been sending me Ethereum. He sent it to his mama. Pack number two. Here's Boral Sword Dragon and Sky Striker Ace. In fact, I think somebody sent me ETH today. Let me just check. Yeah, so uh, uh, Luke Zimmerman sent me 0 0.05 ETH just earlier. So it's definitely active. All right, and pack number three is Ash Blossom in Cosmotown. Now that's not Blue Eyes White Dragon. That's not right. Do I take Doge? I'm afraid I don't because I only accept orders through Coinbase. If Coinbase would just add Doge to their group of stuff that they accept, then I would take Doge. It just wouldn't matter to me. I'd say, yeah, send me anything you want. All right, Mr. Mr. James O'Brien, thanks for opening some cards with us. It's always fun. Mr. Is Satoshi <laughs> confirmed. That's right. <laughs> what? I'm definitely not. <laughs> Hey, mister, my girlfriend's boyfriend said he was going to send you some ETH for Pokemons. Oh, that's so nice of him. He only accepts real coins. Oh, my God. Actually, I should ask my... I should talk to my wife about setting up an account because she she actually enjoys figuring out the, the crypto stuff. I should tell her, let's get a wallet on some other platform to accept, like, SafeMoon and Comrocket. <laughs> when will you accept Doge? Uh, that's a good question. Well, if Coinbase would just add Doge to Coinbase, I could accept it very quickly. I think I would have to open up some sort of wallet on another platform in an order in order to accept it. Can I make an order or is it too late? Go ahead. If China owns 70% of the Bitcoin miners, couldn't they change the ledger in their favor and destroy how Bitcoin works? Yo, I can order now because you accept BTC. Says like so. Master. Yeah, I'll accept anything that Coinbase will accept because that's very uncomplicated for me and I'm not trying to do anything complicated. <laughs> I wonder how to do the accounting for this, though. Weird. Okay. After James, we have Daniel Coronado who wants an XY Evo and one hidden fate. Oh, those are big ones, man. BTC is almost at its cap, so no. Okay, here's evolutions. That's right. I agree with that statement. Here we go. Oh, we did receive some ETH. And that must have been Benjamin Garcia. So, Mr. Benjamin Garcia, what did you want to do with that? Can I just send cum rocket in the form of my actual fluid? No, because that doesn't turn into anything valuable. <laughs> Maybe if you were Brad Pitt. Sneep. <laughs> Can I pay you in caps like it's Fallout? That's right. <laughs> you ready? Do you have any Dark Raichu graded the secret from Team Rocket? Yeah, I have a PSA 10 of him. Clefairy. Oh, that's a cold pack of Hidden Face. Well, we need a hot pack of Evolutions. And it's just going to be Nido King. No. Saw Shining Legend restock rumor. Oh, my gosh. There's always a rumor of everything. I swear to God. Wait until you actually see it dropping in price and showing up in the stores. Then you'll know. 
but I swear people are constantly trying to, oh, it's going to be evolution reprint all day, every day. That's what they were saying not too long ago, and it was all lies, guys. They never, they did not restock evolutions at all. I mean, they, there were like evolution power boxes, but I don't think that was a reprint. It was the same crappy print run that we're used to. Whoop. Pidgey, we'll give you one more, just for fun. Sam Azenta. Okay, that's for our friend Daniel Coronado. Daniel. They're going to reprint Evolutions. I think what happens is whatever set is popular at the moment that people want but is getting too expensive, a clever rumor guy, including the YouTubers who push the rumor, by the way, they do it because there's they got to make a video that makes ad revenue. And they push that rumor because... Uh, it's just the rumor that satisfies your deepest desires the most. Oh, yeah, they're about to reprint base set Pokemon, man. Mister, is there alligators in your lake? Uh, I don't think so. The government will put a limit on crypto in the next five years, or it will be impossible for the Federal Reserve to keep up. Yeah, I don't know. It's a good question. <clears throat> I agree, actually. What we could do is we could... As a people, we could vote out any politician that will do that, but will we actually? I doubt it. I was going to get six Sun and Moon, two Tifas. I can PayPal you $1. No, 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 you're good. Just, uh, so six Sun and Moon base, is that right? Give me Steam Siege reprint or I riot. <laughs> Voting for AOC and the squad. Are you scared of strong women of color? Wow, what a misogynist. Thomas Glucksman says, hey, mister, I'd like one Evo, please. All right, one Evo. Thomas Glucksman. Sneep. <laughs> I'm terrified of them. We've got Magikarp and Pidgeot Full Art. Woo, nice, mister. That's a hot one. Just around the corner. It's always the next pack, isn't it? People in California getting another stimulus of 600. Woo! Is it like state money? I guess it's basically, uh, if, it's, <laughs> if it's state money, then it's basically federal money because... The federal government's going to bail out California no matter what, right? <laughs> oh, man. They keep sending California all this money to build, like, hyper rails. What's like, if you're going to build a hyper rail in California, California gets all the financial benefit of that. You know, their businesses and their people. How about building one over here for me? How about that? If we're going to use federal, federal dollars, that's so crazy that we allow that. It just shouldn't be allowed. Spend California dollars on that, not federal dollars. That's nuts. All right, Thomas Glucksman. Thomas. I never understood that. I feel like the problem is people don't understand even what the federal versus the state is. There's probably a lot of uneducated people who don't realize uh, if you don't live in California and they're building a hyper rail with federal money, you're paying for California's hyper rail so that they can go, yeah, 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 it's so nice to live over here. It's ridiculous, man. Oh, you don't live in California? <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know. It, it just, it, it's the same for New York, by the way. All right, here we are. Thomas. Next up, we got Ramiro. Two vivid, one McDonald's. Two vivid. Here we are. One McDonald's. It actually is money they tax Cal California, supposedly. Maybe a new pair of shoes. And one live booster for Mr. Ramiro. Mr. Ramiro, let's see what you got. Boop. Shelmet. All right, just a shelmet. Sorry, mister. People buying Doge going to wish they owned an Evo's Metapod. That's right. Sneep. Wikipedia says there's a man in the squad. What? I sent you a question on Discord, mister. A question on Discord. All right. 
Let me go look at that. He said, Mr. Are you single? <laughs> Okay, so basically he was asking about the different tiers. Um, so the way it works with those tiers is they charge you more money and the turnaround times are shorter. I never recommend paying more money to get your card sooner. I think it's terribly overpriced in, in many cases. Uh, the other thing is those tiers are also for, uh, what would I say? Oh, they're also for cards that are more expensive. So if your card's valuable, they don't allow you to send it in the lower tiers, unfortunately. And if you send it in the lower tier, they will later charge you anyways for the higher tier when they're done grading. So, and you'll, I'll notify you if that happens, because that's something that's been happen happening uh, lately with PSA and CGC is they're upcharging. It's very frustrating. It's one of the reasons why I want to start a grading company is because I don't think that that's right to do that. I think they just know that they can charge you more because they know you're going to make more money. That's it. Other than that, their grading standard should be exactly the same on every card. should always be exactly high. Look at this. Zation. CGC up charges? Oh, yeah. Only people earning less than 75 k will get a stimulus. I make 140 k and I can barely survive here in the Bay Area. Oh, you're talking about stimulus. You know, the it it's very offensive to me too because the guys who earn 140k are the ones paying all the taxes anyways so it's like somebody who's earning let's say 45k they do pay taxes but it's not very much so we don't appreciate that when somebody has a higher income they also pay a lot of the taxes for that area. So it's like, you get to pay all the taxes. Also, you don't get any stimulus check. The stimulus check would be nice to have. You know, it's kind of like a Christmas gift, isn't it? They should give you something. They should give you a little um, $25 gift card to Applebee's or something. I don't know. <laughs> Score bunny and Zation. All right. And that's for Ramiro, correct? Mr. Ramiro, here we are. Yeah, it's it's silly. Especially, you know, the worst the worst part is when they have like a cutoff line, maybe at seventy five thousand, uh, and let's say you earn seventy six thousand, so you don't qualify. You're like one thousand over. That's the worst part about those lines. Um, if you're just one thousand over, you miss the whole thing. I think that's how it works. Don't ask me. Beautiful day today at the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Is it? It's like nighttime, right? <laughs> it's 1 a.m. for you guys right now, I think. They shot the Sonic Welder in this crazy card scanner analyzer. What? Who shot who? Applebee's is big back. Applebee's is way overpriced. It's just steak. Like, you could just go home and cook some steak. Two custom boosters for Mr. Estuardo. Mr. Estuardo, pack number one for Brava. And pack number two... Purloin, oh, mister, I'm so sorry. Those are tough pulls. Earth Savior, Emmanuel, Estuardo. Mister. Do you accept TCC coin? I do. And Jorge Delatore, he wants one shining face. Have no fear, Benjamin. It'll be your turn, your turn very soon. Right, he wants a champion's path as well. But ding 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 ding. Somebody tried to say something that got muted. Let's see what he tried to say. Type one in chat if you're dangerously horny. That's what he tried to say, but the robot blocked it because you said horny. <laughs> 79. There we go. Yeah, so the robot is able to uh, <laughs> block naughty words. Okay, Mr. Jorge De La Torre, let's see what your polls are. Should have been type 69 in chat. That would have been more, that would have been funnier. And you could have made the donation like a dollar and sixty nine cents, <laughs> or it could have been like six dollars and ninety cents. I guess. Here it goes. 
Pack number one is Machamp. Pack number two is Cacnea. Pack number three is Morlul. Okay, three cold cards, mister. I'm sorry. You only open three packs, so that's not a big surprise. You can't snipe every time, guys. Pull rate's about one in five is what I've found. Mr. Jose, Joshua, Jonathan, John Hincapi. Joseph, Jose Ponce. Here it is, Jorge De La Torre. Sweet! Me so honey. So, Benjamin Garcia is next. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up the giveaway channel now. So the giveaway channel is being unhidden. You guys will want to go over to the, the giveaway channel and guess one in a hundred. Remember, you get one guess. All right, it's visible now. And while you guys are filling that in, let's open for Mr. Benjamin Garcia. Six sun and moon. One, two, three, four, five, six. And two tifas. One, two. Are you ready, Benjamin? I'm scared. Sneep. One, two. Three, four. Five, six. Seven, eight. All right. Only the hot ones. Pack number one is Grimer. What? Pack number two is Crabominable. What even is Crabominable? He looks pretty doofy. Pelipper. Cutie Fly Shenotic. Uh-oh. We got two packs left. We need a hot one. Here's... Oh, there we go. Lapras GX. One Lapras, huh? Hmm... Here's Parasect. So those were a little cold. Uh, you know, I always say the pull rate in the booster packs are about one in five. Sometimes it's a little more. Sometimes it's a little less. You got one Lapras GX in six packs. Here's your Tifa pack. Pack number one is Owser. Oh, you got Maya and Unaleska. Humana, 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 humana. Okay, there's Owser for you, mister. And pack number two. Gestalian Empire Sid. What? Uh, and a girl with the collar on her neck. That's for sure. What? Who are these guys? <laughs> what pokies are these? There you go, mister. Nothing too wild out of the Final Fantasy either. Those were okay pulls. All right. Oops. I'm going to go ahead and refresh one more time. And we're pretty much done taking orders. Let's see. An order from Connor Gillespie, and it's a huge order. So he says, 10 Hidden Fates, a ghost for my friend Earth Savior, and CGC Tier 2, his Blaziken. Oh, mister. Connor's going deep, everyone. Here it is, Connor Gillespie. He's got a big old bag. John Trotter says, I got here late AF. Ah, this one. <laughs> I was going to say. Very good. That's the alternative art Blaziken. And I need a card grader. Give me a minute. Squeak. 
I swear she said she was of pokey age. C, two, plus. Connor, I hope it, it grades perfect, which would be crazy if it did. There you go. And now he wants 10 hidden fates. Well, let's start with this ghost in the past. He's donating this to Earth Savior. Are you ready? Sneep. Earth Savior, maybe you'll pull the ghost in the past card. Someone gave you a shout out on TCA Gaming. Yeah, it was our friend, uh, Mr. Eddie Petty. I really appreciate it. Resonator Engine and Starry Knight, Starry Dragon. What value do you recommend subgrades for CGC? Oh, uh, I wouldn't do it unless it was a card that was truly collectible and very expensive. For most cards, I would just go non-subgrades. Non Edwin, Earth Savior. Like the one he just submitted, actually, that Blaziken Alternative Art. That's a really nice card. Definitely a good idea to put some subgrades on something like that. But let's say it was just the regular Blaziken VMAX. Does it really need subgrades? You can send it back. If it gets pristine 10, you can send it back for the perfect 10. Okay. 10 hidden, huh? Give me a minute. One, two, and three. Mr. I placed two more orders. Sounds good. Two more. I'm going to go ahead and lock up the daily giveaway channel now. All right, so the channel is locked. Oops. Two, three, four. Do you have to buy the yearly membership to be able to grade CGC? Uh, I don't think so. Can't imagine you would need to. I don't even like that these companies do like memberships. They just make no sense. They just make no sense. Lunch stream if you get the new Japanese sets today, says Jack Gray. Yeah, I might do that. I can see that happening. Oops. Minecraft music hits different when you get those cold pulls. I know, right? Do you collect sport cards at all for your personal collection? Not even a little bit. There's been a lot of demand for sports cards on this channel. So I will respectfully stock them up and open them up for you guys if you really want them. Uh, but I do not collect those cards at all. I pretty much only collect Pokemon cards. Big Pokemon card fan. Will I be selling Jet Black and Silver Lance as a pair? Probably not. I mean, they're not. They're they're in individual boxes, so I don't see why you'd need to. I don't really view them as like the battle styles, the way we were doing battle styles. Why is one set dramatically more valuable than the other? You ready, Connor? One, two. Oh, that was a big order. Also, let me check the math on that real fast. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Whew. One, two, three, four. What year of NBA hoops did you order? I ordered the 2021. Sneak. Do you have a preferred year? Pokemon is a sport, mister. So do you so you do collect sports? That's right. Esports. <laughs> Jet Black will sell more a hundred percent. Okay. Well that's fine. You know, if people like Jet Black more, that's fine. Order 2003, huh? Here we go. What do we got? Brock's training. Here's water energy. Oh, no. Oh, man. These are terrible. Coughing. That's three packs. Pack number four. Hoops 2003. Whooper. All right. The fourth pack in the box was Whooper. Jet Black is hot garbage. <laughs> what? 
Snorlax Reverse Hollow, which we count that as a hit, actually. That has a LeBron's rookie card. Oh, well, then it's probably insanely expensive. Here's Fighter Energy. Snorlax Reverse Hollow again. Who's going to win the World Series? Uh, Pikachu. Here's Fighter, Ener Fighter Energy and Gyarados. Have you heard the B-Coin is an app for your phone and you can mine coin on this? What? $3.50 a pack. Ah, oh, Jesus. Electrode. Oh, there we go. Golden Tapu Coco. Beautiful. I was just starting to get worried for you there. I thought you were going to have purely cold packs. I mean, 10 packs. You would hope for one shiny at least. Tapu Coco. Oh, and Galizapod. Now your packs are totally fine. Your packs are fine. You also pull Ekans Misty's Water Command. All these reverse hollow energies. I know. They were killing me. Cool, mister. The packs ended up being all right. So there you go. You also pick up this lovely Whooper. Those are your shinies. And you have a number of GXs that are also valuable. Uh, and all of these go to our friend Connor Gillespie. All right, Connor. Good luck on your grade on the Blaziken. I hope it's a 10. Okay, we'll toss that over there. LeBron rookie is 300,000 card in a 10, though. Woo! All right, we're going deep for LeBron. Mister, any Digimons? All right, we're buying up all the Digimons. We're going to get Digimon. We're going to get Metazoo. We're going to get uh, whatever that Bloodbath or whatever it's called, uh, new game is. We're going to get Magic. We're going to get all of them, mister. We're going to have all the cards. We all miss Kobe. Ah, oh, man. I pass by the crash site every day on the way to work. I mean, if you're curious, Diggies and Yugis, Digimon lovers, please leave. <laughs> Benjamin says, Magic, Pokey, Kobe. They need to make a Pokemon card in memory of, of Kobe. They need like a basketball player Pokemon. When do you open My Little Pony packs? Is that even a thing? Are there actual My Little Pony packs? Let's go get them. James O'Brien says, three more Yugis, max gold. All right, maximum gold. Maximum gold. One, two, three. PSA 10 Kobe Mon. <laughs> he also says three more Evos. All right. Time for the Evo snipe. Shrek packs. Man, if you guys want to open up some oddball packs, just tell me in a private message what oddball pack there is to open and i'll consider it at least do you guys know i bought up those fortnite uh there were some uh, what are they called like the very first boxes of fortnite cards i bought up some of those to put into long-term storage because i don't know what will happen to those over a long period of time they might go up in value just depends on if fortnite sticks around as a game you know what i mean like, nobody knew that Pokemon was going to continue to be successful for 20 years back then when the uh, early vintage boxes came out. What do we got here? Infernity Mirage and House of Dragon Maid. Wait, House Dragon Maid. <laughs> I was thinking, like, Game of Thrones or something. <laughs> House of Dragon Maid. There we go. Pack number two. What do we got on pack number two? We've got Dark Rebel. Ooh, Red Eyes Black Dragon, mister. I like that one. So you pick up Red Eyes, Black Dragon. Don't fall over. Garbage Pale Kids. <laughs> Series 1 for it. I think that's what it was called, Series 1. We also have Chaos Dragon and Dark Rebellion XYZ Dragon again. House of Dragon Maid is a pop one. That's right. Harry Potter cards. We could do Harry Potter cards... I mean, I'm open-minded to anything you guys want to do. I can't, I can't say that I'm. I believe that the Harry Potter cards will be collectible, but I, I, you know, if you guys want to open stuff, we can open stuff. 
Here's Dog Trio. We can open it just for fun, I guess, if you just want to see it opened. Here's Dog Trio. And Hitmonchan. Oh my gosh. Beautiful, beautiful Hitmonchan. And, ooh, Haunter Mega Slowbro. You know nothing's hotter than the Mega Slowbro in this set. He's being eaten. That's like a gore card, right? Okay, toss this over here. Here it is. What do we got? Haunter. Come on, Secret Rare Pipichu. Is it gore? No, the term's vore, isn't it? It's not gore, it's vore. So these are cold. Nothing wild in there. Uh, yeah, the evil packs were just okay. You got him on Chan. He's kind of neat. There you go, Mr. James. Mr. James. Picking up red eyes. Black Dragon. I'm going to do a last refresh. Let's see how... Let's see if there's any more cards people want to open. Kitty's snooping about. What do you think's in here, Kitty? Whew. What about some Bakugan? That's right. We're going to have Bakugan. Okay. Looks like James was the last order, and that means we're ready for the giveaway. Kitty, are you ready for the giveaway? Kitty's been really jumpy ever since that thing almost fell on her. Okay, and now... Here it goes. 28. So 28's the winning number. We're going to do a search for 28. Nobody had 28. Let's try 27. 26. 25. 24. There we go. We got two people guessed 24. Let's see who guessed it first, though. So there's Tokemon. Tokemon guessed 24 first. And now we just need to make sure Tokemon didn't guess twice. Tokemon. He did not. All right. And let me just see who Tokemon is real fast. Tokemon is Jesse Salinas. All right. Congratulations to Jesse Salinas. Let's, <laughs> I was only off by 60. It's just Wobbuffet. Oh, Jesse, I'm sorry. It is a cold pack. I bet the next one's hot. Let's see. Oh, what'd you... Oh, it's a good one, too, but I won't tell you what it is. All right, you're off by one, and it was a good one. That's tough. <laughs> Connor says, I had another order. Well, let me go see what that is, Connor. If it's going to be live packs, I can't open them, obviously. But if it's a different order, we can definitely open them. Okay, I'm refreshing. I'm refreshing. Let's see. Oh, and yep, you do have another order. For two live packs. Oh, I'm so sorry, Connor. Connor, you were this close. He says, I sent them a while ago. Yeah, sometimes, though, the order does not show up uh, without having to refresh it. I'm so sorry, Connor. He says I sent it a while ago. I know, but it it showed up. It showed up late, man. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, I I hate to do that, Connor. You will be refunded for it, but th I can't do anything else about it because you know what I shouldn't have done. I shouldn't have revealed the next card because, well, on the other hand, they sniped him before he sniped. Hold on, let me think about it. Let me think about it. You know, if it's true that he did send it a while ago, he would not have known what was coming next in the box, right? I think we can give it to him. I think I think we can give it to him. So I tell you what, Mr. Connor, let's do it. Oh, look at this, Connor. So Connor wouldn't have known. And Decidueye. He wouldn't have known what was next because I'd just done it. And it is. PSA 10 SV 40, 74. He wouldn't have known. You pull, oh, Stack Attacka. Mister, what is this? Look at this. So pretty. Yeah, I think that's fine. I don't think that's a big problem. What do you guys think? You think that was a big problem? I think if he had sent it, uh, because I can see where it showed up. 
it ended up showing up beneath James O'Brien after I refreshed. So it's just one of those things where uh, PayPal didn't show the order until later. Sometimes that happens with PayPal. <laughs> but you actually ordered at the same time as James O'Brien. I can tell by the timing. All three of the orders say 1.32 a.m. So uh, that would mean we serviced James O'Brien and then your order showed up under his later. So you're, you're fine. I don't see the problem. Okay, there we go, Mr. Connor. Congratulations on that right at the end of the live stream. Well, you know, you're lucky. If you think about it, you're lucky because uh, wouldn't it have sucked if... Well, no, because if somebody else had pulled the PSA 10, you know what I would have done for you, Connor? I would have just refunded you. So you'd have been fi fine either way. I'm going to go ahead and shut down for the night, I think. If you guys have not hit the subscribe button, maybe you'll consider doing that for me. I also will want to see you guys tomorrow, so I hope you show up tomorrow if you've never rang the bell. The bell tells you exactly when I go live. He says, you can see the time, right? Yep, he ordered at 1.32, which is the exact same time James O'Brien ordered. Uh, however, his order didn't show up on the list until I just refreshed. That happens all the time. When the, when the line is pretty much empty, you get... The thing is, when you click send on PayPal, it doesn't send like that. It doesn't send instantly. There's like some sort of processing time, and the processing time can be different. Uh, just, I don't know how it works. Maybe it's the internet. Maybe it's random. I don't know. But it can take like even 10 minutes for an order to show up. And uh, so his order just showed up a little later. But it's, it's, it's all good. I'm pretty sure um, I did the right thing here because... Yeah, we, we did everything fine. What would have been a mess up is if is if the giveaway had actually pulled the 10. That would have been pretty unfortunate. But I would have just refunded Connor of the 40 bucks. All right, guys, I'm heading out. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.